and Cato site of the state girls softball tournament where the park team is about ready to defeat the Lakeville North Panthers. In fact, they just won the game, I believe. Nine to nothing. Yep, nine to nothing is your final. The uh, top of the seventh inning, Lakeville North just ended their bat. They're hugging park players and they are victorious. Nine to nothing victory now. Which kind of interesting is we're at the state tournament here, right? Well, the Faribault Falcons, I just visited with their coaches. Normally, you get 10 minutes infield. At least they did in the sections. They're getting eight-minute infields at the state tournament. <laughs> so you get the state, and they shave a couple of minutes off your infield warm-up. So that's the status of that. Both teams, of course, get their warm-up. Faribault Falcons, the number one seed, will be the home team here. Take on the Bemidji Lumberjacks. And we're going to go over a lot of statistics here for you. We're going to do that. I guarantee it. I do have uh, some stats here from Bemidji as well as from Faribault to go over. So I certainly want to do that. Courtesy of the Broster in Faribault, we're bringing you our pregame report here today. A uh, big thank you to all these super people. We're making our broadcast possible today from Caswell Park, North Mankato. Steel Wasika Co-op Electric, Reliance Bank of Faribault by Parker Cole Funeral Home in Faribault. Deb Salmonson, Remax Realty of Faribault. Our Shamble Brothers Disposal will bring you that neat feature again, our pickup of the game. Harley's Auto Salvage of Faribault. Judd Osterman in Demro in Faribault. Garlic's Water Conditioning by First United Bank. Bashers, the J&J Bowling Center. Also by Pleasant Manor, Pleasant View Estates. Faribault Interiors, Bolt Funeral Home, all of Faribault. Tony Langer, Jason Crone, your Faribault State Farm Insurance Agents, and yes, we'll be doing a player of the game again, courtesy of those guys. Consolidated Communications, IBEW Local Union 110, Hometown Credit Union, the Broster of Faribault Star Trophy and Apparel of Faribault, Weikert Realty, Jake Pillar of Faribault, and the State Bank of Faribault is bringing you our broadcast here today. Again, a big thank you to the Broster. They got the best chicken around at the Broster. I love their fish, too, at the Broster. Burgers, well, I've actually never had a bad meal there. It's very convenient. The Broster in Faribault bringing you our pregame report. We'll take a look at some of the stats from Bemidji right after this 90-second timeout. Steel Wasika Cooperative Electric urges you to be alert to the dangers of working near overhead power lines. Each year, people are killed or injured when farm or construction equipment contact power lines. Stay at least 10 feet away in all directions. Getting too close is dangerous as electricity can arc or jump to conducting material or objects. If your equipment does come into contact with power lines and you are not in imminent danger, stay in the cab, call for help, and warn others nearby to stay away and wait until the electric utility arrives. Steel Wasika Cooperative Electric, your touchstone energy cooperative. Reliance Bank of Faribault is a terrific way for you to support your favorite school and benefit yourself also. Get more details about their Faribault Falcon, Bethlehem Academy, or Medford Tiger debit cards. Open a free checking account like the green checking with no minimum balance, currently 1.5% APY on your deposits, and choose the Money Pass Visa card with a Falcon, Cardinal, or Tiger logo on it. A portion of the interchange fee on every point of sale transaction is donated back to your favorite school. Another way that Reliance Bank of Faribault is redefining service every day. Member FDIC and Equal housing lender. Thinking about your own funeral leaves most of us feeling a little uneasy. But more adults are finding by pre-planning their funeral, they're providing their family with greater emotional and financial security when that time comes. Parker Cole Funeral Home and Crematory at their new location in Faribault has been caring for families of all faiths in Faribault and the surrounding area since 1876. If you're considering pre-arranging your funeral, contact them. They'd be happy to walk you through the pre-planning process. Parker Cole Funeral Home for one, which is if you're coming to the ballpark, the field of the Faribault Falcons, be on. There are four main fields and then a couple of fields uh, uh, out yonder. I see they're building some other fields across the road here too, but we won't get into that. Bemidji comes into this game. The Lumberjacks with a record of 16 and 8 on the season. They're 6 and 4 on the road, 10 and 4 at home. They've scored 197 runs in those 24 games. They have 246 hits. Team batting average is 363. They have 11 home runs on the team. This says 52 stolen bases. When I looked online on the softball hub, they said they had 88 stolen bases. So that's quite a difference. The high school league says 52. And I could swear I saw on the softball hub when I did my preview of the team 
88. I certainly didn't make it up. Their team ERA is 3.68, and that could be the difference in this game. Obviously, Michaela Armbruster, an ERA under one. They have a total of 133 strikeouts as a team pitching staff. Of course, Armbruster herself leads the state in strikeouts, and I just got the updated stats from the Falcons direct, so I'll share those with you in a few moments. 49 errors by this Bemidji team. 49 errors in their 24 games. So those are some of the team statistics to share with you. I'll take a look at some of the Lumberjack individual stats right after this 90-second timeout. In fast pitch softball, having a good defense is essential. Not giving additional outs to any team increases your chances of winning with multiple quality plays keeping the score down. Same is true in real estate. Remax experts realtor Deb Salmonson has 23 years experience selling real estate. 23 years experience selling in the Faribault area. That can save seller and buyer. Check out her website and see a number of testimonials from people at Deb Salmonson Remax Experts.com. It's a seller's market right now, so the perfect time Time to list the home. Call Deb for a free market analysis. 507-210-1005. Our Shamble Brothers Disposal of Faribault has been serving the Faribault area for over six decades. The same local family-owned business has been assisting families and businesses. Randy and the whole Our Shamble Disposal family would like to thank their many loyal customers. Three generations of Our Shambles have strived to treat their customers like family. It's not just picking up garbage to them. Service and relationships are why Our Shamble Brothers Disposal's in the business. If you'd like to be part of the Our Shamble Brothers Disposal family, just phone 334-8910. Hi, Cody here with Harley's Auto Salvage, right across from the Rice County Fairgrounds. We've been here since 1952 and are proud to be Faribault's largest recycler. Be sure to check out our drive through recycling building. We can recycle your aluminum cans, copper, brass, and metal. And we're your source for new and used auto parts. If we don't have it, we can locate it on our nationwide locating system. Plus, we'll pay you top dollar for your junk vehicle and we'll pick it up. Be sure to like and follow us on Facebook. Harley's Auto Salvage, across from the fairgrounds in Faribault. Can't be putting that flag up, man. <laughs> Some lumberjack fan is putting a flag up so we can't see. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe they let that stuff happen. Anyway, for Bemidji. <laughs> for Bemidji, individually, Looking at the pitching first, they have three different pitchers listed here, and I would assume that they'll throw their number one pitcher. You would think so. In the first round of the state tournament against the number one seed, Faribault Falcons. Gabby Takanen is 8-3 and three on the season. 72 innings pitched and struck out 33 batters, so not really a strikeout pitcher. 3.30 ERA. The other two pitchers, Maddie Hansen, 5-3 and three on the season, 44 innings pitched, 23 strikeouts, and a 4.45 ERA. And Yvette Morgan, who is hitting 586, but on the pitching side, she's 3-2 and two on the season. 24 innings pitch, 14 strikeouts, and a 4.08 ERA. <laughs> now they just, uh, one of the security officers asked the guy not to put the flag up. At the request of his broadcaster, by the way, who's sitting in front of me. <laughs> because he couldn't see either, obviously. Ah, the stuff they do. So those are the pitching stats for Bemidji. And as you can tell by looking at the stats anyway, you know, not a, they don't have a strikeout pitcher on their team. But I can tell you, having seen the Falcons a few times this season, that they have had issues against throwers that aren't real hard in, in, in their ability to hit throwers that do not throw hard, they've had some issues. So uh, we'll see if that ends up being a factor here in this first game against the Bemidji Lumberjacks, who again come into the game with a record of 16 and eight on the season. Looking at team batting average, excuse me, at the individual batting averages, we already told you the team. I told you about Yvette Morgan. She has 28 RBIs, 34 hits and is hitting 586. Also has four home runs on the season. That's impressive. Gracie Fisher has 24 hits, 23 ribbies, four homers as well, hitting 323 on the year. 
Annika Kakinen is hitting 481 with 31 hits. Must be toward the top of the order. She has 37, 37 hits and just eight RBIs. So those are some of the hefty batting averages. Emma Stanek is hitting 397. 31 hits, 26 RBIs. McKenna Quinn, 377 with 26 hits and six RBIs. Well, I told you this team can really hit with a 363 team batting average. That's what they sent into the high school league. Again, I could swear I saw on the uh, softball hub they had 88 stolen bases here. It says 52. That's still a lot in the uh, 24 games that they've played. Falcons know that. I asked Coach Armbruster, Coach Silver, if they got a scouting report on Bemidji. They said they really don't have much of one. They never have seen each other in a tournament. Even in the summer, they never see each other in a tournament. And as far as they can tell, they have not come down to the Metro to play in tournaments. So it's a whole different brand of ball. As Coach Arn Brewster is warming up his daughter on the field right below us here at Caswell Park in North Mankato. Young ladies lining the field. Young gentlemen's raking the field. They'll be going out to take infield. We will not be starting, obviously, at 11 first pitch. But it won't be long after that. And we'll hit the airwaves because 9 nothing was the score. Park over Lakeville North. If you're keeping track of all this at home. There was an upset in the making. Stillwater was ahead of Forest Lake. Last time I checked. We'll see if we can keep you updated on those games. But obviously we're going to concentrate primarily on the Falcon contest against Bemidji. That's why we're here. But I'll let you know how Randolph's doing in Hayfield and some of the other area teams that are here. We just told you about Lakeville North losing. 9-0 on the field that Faribault's playing on. They just got done with their game against the uh, Park team. It was close most of the way through the game. It was nothing, nothing. I think, through the fourth inning. And then the bats broke out. You know, a couple second time through the order, third time through the order. Park started really pummeling some balls and ended up winning it by a score of 9 to nothing over the Lakeville North Panthers. We'll take a look at some Feral Bowl Falcon statistics coming into this game. Of course, they have the state's best pitcher in terms of strikeouts. And Kayla Armbruster leads the state. We're talking every class now, mind you. Leads the state in strikeouts this season. And she's just a junior. Good news is she'll be back next year. Her battery mate, Abby Van Wyen, will be back next year. But, boy, there are some the four seniors are really the, the key cogs in the wheel of the Feral Bowl Falcons this season that... Remember that last year they had a great year and ended up getting beat in the sections by New Ulm. Some of those ladies helped get them that far, and now the program's taken another step. Just before I walked up the steps, you'll never guess who I had a nice visit with, Jim Reed, who was the first, I believe he was the first softball coach at Faribault High School. I could be wrong on that, but I believe he was the first coach. I know he was a coach when I got to KDHL in 1987 and coached for a number of years. Then he did some assistant coaching before he retired. It was nice to see Jim with his Falcon shirt on. <laughs> he was wearing his Faribault Falcon shirt, and I don't think it was a modern one either. It's kind of, I mean, they're all cool. Every Falcon shirt is cool, don't get me wrong, but I think I think it's from, uh, from days gone by. I'll put it that way. So it was really nice to see Jim Reed here at the state tournament. I'm sure he like a proud papa because he was in charge of that program for so many years. You're in tune to KDHL AM, Faribault, Minnesota. We're at Caswell Park, North Mankato. It's the girls' softball tournament. The Faribault Falcons and the Bemidji Lumberjacks in the first round. Falcons, the number one seed in the tournament. Bemidji, of course, did not get seeded, so Faribault drew them. Other teams, it's Winona against Wakori on field number two at the same time. I'll try to keep you updated on that because Faribault would play the winner of that game if they win, and the uh, team that does not win, they would play them if the Falcons should happen to lose this game. On the other side of the bracket, North Branch, the number two seed, is taking on Academy of Holy Angels. That's on field three, and on field four, it's Hill Murray out of St. Paul and Benilde St. Margaret School going at it at 11 this morning. Same time that the Falcons are scheduled to play Bemidji. And again, we're obviously not right on time in terms of first pitch. Neither team has taken infield yet. The Falcons, being the home team, will be the first team to take infield. And again, I was told by the coaches, they're only getting eight minutes. They said they handed out a package at the end of the section tournament. That, that packet said they got 10 minutes of infield. <laughs> but Coach Silver told me 
not that long ago that when he came in the gate, they said you get eight-minute infields, even though the packet said ten-minute infields. So they're cutting it back a couple of minutes. When we return, we'll take a look at some of those Falcon statistics. This is the first ever trip for Faribault Boys. they take the field to take their infield. And some of their fans, of course, applauding as they take the field for their infield. We'll be back with a look at some of the Falcon stats right after this 90-second timeout. Judd Osterman and Demerol Limited is a local independent firm of certified public accountants serving Southern Minnesota. They provide a full range of services for individuals, small businesses, and corporations in many industries. They take pride in their local identity and the personal relationships they have developed with their clients. JOD is large enough to provide a full range of services, small enough to assure individual attention, and dedicated enough to take interest in your success. Online at jodcpa.com. Hi, this is Chris from Garlic's Water. Are you fed up with fighting rust stains and hard water problems at home? We have a system that can solve all your headaches, a Kinetico water system. We have a wide range of Kinetico water systems to fix any problem, big or small. Give me a call at 800-722-1282 or go online at garlicswater.com and let me show you what I can do to help. At Garlic's Water, your water has never been treated so well. Garlic's Water. With First United Bank in Faribault, you may be able to buy a home with only 3% down. The good news does not end there. Qualified buyers will also receive a $5,000 grant to use for funds towards down payment and or closing costs. This program is not just for first-time home buyers. Contact the mortgage team at First United Bank today, Debbie Nelson or Chris O'Neill, for complete details. Get closer to your new home purchase with 3% down. First United Bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender, NMLS, number 486008. Like money in the bank, the Faribault Falcons are whipping the ball around, being very impressive in their warm-ups here. I'm sure Bemidji has a keen eye on this number one ranked team, is, and they are impressive when they do their infield. Bashers, the J&J Bowling Center, is an impressive place to go to if you want some great vittles. Yep. They, of course, are famous for their ribs. They have the juiciest burgers in town, and they got some new appetizers you may want to check out, okay? Head on over to Bashers, and remember that the J&J Bowling Center has those great bowling specials going on. They want to get the kids out bowling all summer long. You can still take advantage of that great bowling deal where you bowl Tuesday through Thursday, and it's a set price, I think 40 bucks for the whole summer. I mean, it, it's an incredible deal. Check out the details by swinging in to Bashers, the J&J &J Bowling Center, and get more details about their terrific bowling special throughout the summer at J&J &J Bowling Center and Bashers in Faribault. As I mentioned, we're, I just got the stats here from the Faribault coaches. They have many more stats that they don't ask for by the high school league on the stat sheets for Faribault. 20 and 2 on the season is the Faribault record. Their losses, 20 and 2 on the year. They lost to Mankato West, of course, in the uh, in the subsection in that final day when they had two games. They had to play two games because West beat them the first game, but then they turn around and beat them in the uh, second game of the contest. And then their other loss was to New Prague in a dome in West St. Paul early in the season when the oh and the. <laughs> Well, you remember April. It was really a horrible month, so they had to play some games in domes. That game was played in the dome at West St. Paul, as I mentioned. New Prague winning 2-1 to one on a walk-off homer in the eighth inning against the Faribault Falcons, and I believe Michaela Armbruster did pitch that game. I'll give you her stats right now. Why not? I just got to turn to the pitching page. These are very impressive. She has pitched 134 and two-thirds innings, has given up just 59 hits, has hit four batters, has given up five home runs, is 19 and two on the season. She has a 0 0.99 ERA, has started 21 games, has 19 complete games, 13 shutouts. She has thrown 1,351 strikes, 467 balls. That's an amazing strikes to balls ratio. 238 strikeouts in 134 and two thirds innings. Yeah, I would say 
She's a strikeout pitcher. She has struck out 158 batters swinging and 80 batters looking. Her pitches per game is 94.5. Her strikeouts per game is just a tad under 12.4. So very impressive statistics for Michaela Armbruster, the junior right-hander for the Faribault Falcons, who will be, of course, in the pitching circle here in this opening game, the quarterfinal round, as Faribault is just concluding their infield here at Caswell Park, Diamond One here in Faribault. You know, the decorations here, they got all kinds of decorations with advertising out on the outfield fences and whatnot, but I've always said that Faribault Interiors, Faribault Interiors, which is the home of our Faribault Coaches shows on Saturday mornings, and of course we've expanded that to include more than just coaches. We've had some theater people on, some music people on, the robotics team was on. We've been trying to get the trap shooters on, so if you're listening, trap shooters, we'd love to have you come out. Plan on doing a wrap-up spring show here in a couple of Saturdays when all the spring sports are over. Track and field is this weekend, baseball's next weekend in terms of state tournaments. So that's kind of in the plans with Sam and the gang at Faribault Interiors. And I was about to say, I've always called Faribault Interiors a candy store for decorators. That's exactly what it is. And they can do virtually everything in their home cabinets. They can do countertops, all kinds of flooring available. They got all these neat knickknacks. If you've got a cabin, you might want to pop on in. They got all kinds of terrific artwork and some items that would really look good in a cabin as well as in your home. Check it out if you've never been to Faribault Interiors. All they ask is that you stop by and give them a look. They are located across from the Faribault Area Chamber of Commerce building on Wilson Avenue in Faribault. Faribault Interiors. They are so proud of the Faribault Falcon fast pitch team and wish them the best of luck here in the state tournament. They'd love to see them come home with some big time hardware. We'll be back in North Mankato in 90 seconds. Everyone should know by... Pleasant Manor Nursing Home in Faribault understands that life is a journey. At Pleasant Manor, every employee is committed to making the journey as pleasant as possible. 24-hour skilled nursing, short-term rehab, hospice care, and physical occupational and speech therapy services are available. Pleasant Manor doesn't just care for physical needs, but emotional also. With worship services, daily activities, and more. Don't wait until an emergency. Take a tour with your loved ones soon and see if it's where you or they want to spend part of your life journey. Pleasant Manor, 27 Brand Avenue in Faribault, because the journey matters. Bolt Funeral Home in Faribault understands their work with families often comes at a difficult time. That's why they're specially trained in pre-planning so the basics can be completed hopefully long before the services are needed. Bolt Funeral Home provides traditional and cremation services with the most compassionate care. Many generations of families have trusted their loved ones in the care of Bolt Funeral Home with generations of experience and decades of trust. Proud of their five generations of Faribault Falcon graduates, visit their website, boltfuneralhome.com, for more details about their services. For State Farm Insurance Agent Tony Langer to Faribault, being a good neighbor is about more than just serving your insurance needs. It's about living and working in this community. Your neighbors trust State Farm Agent Tony Langrud for affordable insurance because whether they have questions, need answers, or have a claim, they always get the personal service they deserve. For your free insurance and financial review, call State Farm Agent Tony Langrud. Falcon fans are cheering their team as they come off the field from their infield warm-ups. Bemidji is taking the field now to do their warm-ups, and then uh, we were told they'd have eight-minute warm-ups each. That means right around 11.20 or so will be our first pitch, if if they actually take eight minutes. I think Faribault might have got a little over eight minutes. I guess I didn't time them. Well, we gave you some of the pitching stats of the Faribault Falcons. Fielding-wise, they really have flashed some very good leather on the season, too, and they have become much better at defending small ball. That was what really kind of got them last year in that New Ulm game. New Ulm is just known for playing that style, the small ball style. And Faribault knew that they had to get better at that if they wanted to get to this spot, the state tournament, and they did. They got better. They have just 14 errors total on the season in 22 games, 14 errors. That's very, very good. (laughs) 
I was just looking at the catching statistics here and trying to figure out. I thought I read, uh, well, I guess these are the updated stats, maybe a couple of stats ago. I don't remember anybody stealing a base, though, and they've got a couple of extra stolen bases on here from their opponent. All I can tell you is <laughs> teams have not tried to run too much. If I read this right, they only had like seven attempts on the season and four caught stealing. So that means three stolen bases all year allowed by Faribault. That's just almost mind-boggling. <laughs> you know, but the Big Nine Conference, they were breezed through. They were unbeaten at the Big Nine, did not lose a single Big Nine Conference game. Are the Big Nine Conference champs, of course, the Section 2 AAA champs, probably the toughest section in the states, specifically in Class 3A. I'm not going to say every class in the state, but it could be right up there. But in 3A for sure, Section 2 is the toughest class in the state when they add New Ulm, state rank, Mankato East, state rank, Mankato West, state rank, <laughs> Faribault, of course, state rank. I mean, a very tough section, Section 2 AAA. To come out of that, you automatically get an automatic shot to win a state tournament here, but you have to play good for two days. That's right, two days. You have to play consistent. You can't have a bad inning. You can't let errors snowball on you. I was talking to Chris Silver about that not too long ago. You can't let one bad play affect the rest of your game. you got to flush it. That's one of the great life lessons you learn in sports. Something bad happens, you just got to let it go and move on to the next play. The Faribault Falcons' impressive team batting average is 330. 330 team batting average. Remember, 363 for Bemidji. 330 for Faribault, but against, I would dare say, tougher competition. The Big Nine had five state-ranked teams this year, and they went unbeaten in the Big Nine. Faribault has eight triples, 10 home runs on the season. They've scored 132 runs in 22 games. They have 43 doubles. They have 191 total hits. Again, the team batting average is 330. The on-base percentage as a team is 381. And the slugging percentage is 484. Impressive. Very impressive. Faribault as a team is 107 total strikeouts. 76 swinging, 31 looking. They have 48 walks on the year. There's not a single Falcon with double-digit walks. I was kind of shocked to see that. And they've only had three hit batsmen. 33 stolen bases on the season for Faribault. And I don't see a caught stealing here to tell you how accurate they were in terms of uh, attempts versus steals. But 33 steals. They're led by Ellie Knutson with nine steals. Nine steals for Ellie Knutson. Ali Shack, who is their leadoff hitter, has four steals on the season. So those are some of the stats team-wise. I do have some individual stats we can go over as Bemidji is concluding their infield in the next few minutes. Again, the Faribault Falcons, the Bemidji Lumberjacks. You can probably hear the announcer in the background. Uh, he's from Lakeville. The guy who's announcing in the background the Winona game from Lakeville. We know him well. He's a good guy from Lakeville, but he's announcing that game. The legendary Dick Jankowski is here. He's not doing the game that we're on here. <laughs> he's doing uh, games on field number, let's see, what field is that? Oh, I can't see the field number because people are sitting on top of tables and you can't see fields up here at the media area. I'll take a look during the break that you're going to hear right now. We'll be back at Caswell Park North Mankato State Tournament Softball in 90 seconds. Hey there. As a paperclip, I am all for bundling. But with things like internet streaming and TV, I have my limits. After all, I'm just a twisted piece of metal. That's where Consolidated Communications comes in. Right now, add TV and 20 megs of internet and get free showtime for two years. With no data cap, downtime, or delays, all while saving a bundle. And I know a thing or two about bundles. When you want to keep it all together, visit Consolidated.com or call 844-YOUR-CCI today. Services not available in all areas and vary by location. Terms and conditions apply. 
The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers was founded by 10 men over a century ago. Since then, women have made IBEW Local 110 a rewarding place to work, learn, and thrive. This rewarding career offers women and men equal pay, benefits, and the best training in the electrical industry. Visit the work tab on IBEWpros.org to find out more about an electrical career. Get your next electrical project done on time and on budget. That's the IBEW Local Union 110's power of professionalism. Hello, I am Craig Pedersen, and I'm thrilled to be Hometown Credit Union's new mortgage lender for the Faribault office. I have been a mortgage lender for over 25 years, and I love helping people achieve their dream of affordable home ownership. Apply online, call, or stop by today to see just how easy it is to be at home with Hometown Credit Union. Equal housing lender, member NCUA. Well, unfortunately, the wind is picking up. It's always windy here, North Mankato. I don't remember too many years when there hasn't been wind. The American flag in the middle of the park is sticking straight out. It was calm when I got here. The first game, the 9 o'clock game, they didn't have any wind issues to deal with. But we certainly got them now as the wind has really picked up here at Caswell Park. I'm sitting down when I start doing the play-by-play. -play. I planned on standing up so I mean that's when I can actually see what's going on on the field <laughs> and you probably want me to see what's going on so we can uh, tell you the coaches and the umpires going over lineup cards right now at home plate as uh, always at the state fast pitch tournament you are on your own and trying to get starting lineups which is always an issue State baseball tournaments, they do make copies of a lineup card, which they give to their public address announcers, and they allow media to get those. Here we do not get copies of the lineup cards. I can't imagine Faribault changing too much their lineup, so I pretty much have written theirs in. If there are any changes, we'll have to catch them off the PA announcer, and we'll have to do likewise with the, the uh, Bemidji lineup. We're going over the ground rules here. Of course, Faribault coaches played here last week. They played in a Section 2 AAA preview tournament here a few weeks ago. So they should feel, and I was talking to Chris Silver about this, they should feel right at home here in Caswell Park. It's the same setup as it is during the section tournament. There's a little more activity. There's a medical tent. There's concessions, more concessions out here than there are during the section tournament. But otherwise, it's pretty much all the same. So from that aspect, they really shouldn't be too nervous, I wouldn't think, because they've they've been here the last couple of weeks. Now, they haven't been to the state tournament ever, but again, same fields, and the setup is pretty much the same. They have a high school league trailer here in the middle and, and some other stuff that you don't see at the section, but other than that, the field, the same. The Niji has never been to the state tournament either, just like Faribault, at least that's what I was told. The broadcaster is sitting right in front of me. So the Bemidji Lumberjacks, as some of the Falcon fans are holding up a sign, it says, oh, I wish I could read it. It says Gold Falcons on the bottom. <laughs> I can't read the middle of it though. And I just had my eyes worked on yesterday, but we're going to have to do some more work on my eyes, I guess, in a couple of weeks. So they're ready to announce the starting lineups. We will do likewise right after this 90-second timeout. For delicious food at very good prices, stop by the Broaster in Faribault. Their specialty is the genuine broaster chicken, but the fish is excellent. The burgers are terrific. You get to choose a baked potato with your meal. Service is awesome. The meals are not pre-cooked. You get your chicken, fish, shrimp, or burgers fresh, juicy. Next time you're hungry, go to the broaster, 221 Lindale Avenue South in Faribault. Your stomach will thank you. These days, there are so many promotional products available to help get the word out about your business. Let Star Trophy and Apparel assist you. Star Trophy and Apparel. The sky really is the limit here. Golf balls, pens, mouse pads, mugs, umbrellas. Star Trophy and Apparel can get you set up. 
Stop in for a terrific selection of athletic wear, too. Falcons, Bethlehem Academy, Medford, Waterville, Elysian, Morristown. Trophies and plaques, hats, shirts, jackets with your company logo on them. Star Trophy and Apparel, the place to go, located at 128 Prairie Avenue Southwest, Faribault. Considering a move in 2018? Follow our lead at the State Bank of Faribault. Hi, I'm Chris Jeans from the State Bank of Faribault Mortgage Department. We are packing up our mortgage department and moving out to our branch location on Western Avenue. When you want to buy a new home, work with the State Bank of Faribault, your local mortgage experts. We specialize in helping you find the mortgage and payment that best fits your budget. It's easier to work with the State Bank of Faribault. The State Bank of Faribault, tsbf.com, member FDIC, equal housing lender, NMLS 638054. Well, I was hoping that I could get the lineup from the PN out, so the timing there was not good on my part. But, uh, so we're just getting the last ones here. That young lady's wearing catcher's gear, so I know what position she plays. We got two more here. And of course, they never announce who the designated player is batting for. Oh, they announced it. Wow, they've never done that before. That's awesome. <laughs> I always thought, you go to state baseball tournaments, too, they never tell you who the, who the batter's DHing for, which I always thought is kind of a you know, bad thing. I mean, just because the person's not hitting doesn't mean they shouldn't be announced in the lineup. So they're about to announce the Faribault Falcon lineup. All right, we can tell you who the starters are for Bemidji here as I... Try to get along. I may not have all the positions, but I can tell you, leading off is Samantha Edlin. She's a senior. Batting second will be Annika Takanen. She is a sophomore, the left fielder. Takanen, the left fielder. Batting third is Yvette Morgan, a junior, the shortstop. Young lady who is just pummeling the ball. The cleanup hitter is Gracie Fisher. She is a softball. Batting fifth is McKenna Quinn, a senior. Batting sixth will be Emma Stonick, a sophomore. She's the catcher. Batting seventh, Gabby Takanen, a junior. She's the pitcher. The designated player, DH basically, is Savannah Baki, a junior. She is hitting for, well, wait, wait a minute here. According to uh, Mandy Hansen is is the eighth batter. They're hitting for Gabby Tackett, I guess. So Maddie Hansen is batting seventh, and she's hitting for the pitcher, Gabby Tackett. The number nine hitter is Brooke Hildenbrand, a senior, the right fielder. For Faribault, leading off will be Ali Shack, the center fielder, wears number seven. Michaela Armbruster wears number nine, is the pitcher. Bree Bresnahan is the uh, shortstop, bats third. She wears number 10. Number three, Cassie Swanson, the first baseman, is the cleanup hitter. Abby Van Ryan wears her position number. And I did not hear them announce the starting lineup, but I'm going to assume it's the same as it's pretty much been. Abby Lake would be next, the right fielder, a sophomore. Then it would be Cameron Selmanson. The left fielder. As the Faribault Falcons take the field here. First, the home team. I should get my binoculars out here, too, just in case we have a lineup change somewhere down the road. I've got to stand up here so I can see, so probably get some wind. 
Mikhail Armbruster, the junior pitcher, is in the pitching circle. Her battery mate is Abby Van Ryan. At first base is Cassie Swanson. At second base, we've got Lauren O'Neill. Got to keep my O'Neill straight. At shortstop is Bree Bresnahan, and at third base is Ellie Knutson. Out in left field is Cameron Selmanson. Center field, Ali Shack, and in right field is Abby Lake. All those outfielders have made some outstanding catches during the course of the season. Yeah, you can't get to this stage without having some good defense. And as I said before, the number one thing this team had to work on to get to this state tournament from last year is their bunt defense, and it has turned out to be a very good bunt defense. Not many teams have been able to execute those on the Falcons this season. So Arm Brewster concluding her warm-up tosses. She's a right-hander. We gave you her stats earlier. The leading strikeout pitcher in the state. That's all classes. Leading strikeout pitcher in the state. And the first batter is a lefty. Samantha I can't read my own writing here. Samantha Edland. So Samantha Edland will lead things off. A left-handed hitter. We get started at 11.26 by my watch. Edland, the center fielder, you would think has very good wheels. We do not have individual stolen bases in the uh, high school league stats, which I've never understood, but they don't re request those. As she steps in, Michaela Armbruster gets set to deliver first pitch, and the righty delivers a strike on the outside corner. We got a delayed call umpire, which has been typical, I guess. I was told by an umpire that's what they teach you in umpire school, so that's why they have those delayed calls. And the pitch... A high fly pop-up. Can Van Ryan catch it? She took the mask off and she could not make the catch. Almost made a great catch. Unfortunately, she had the mask in one hand. <laughs> she's looking at her. <laughs> she's uh, Abby's always a lot of fun. Got a big smile on her face. She's, why, why was I carrying my helmet? <laughs> you toss it to the side when you want to make a catch. She had that helmet in one hand the whole time. Wasn't able to make it, obviously. 0-2 is the count. 0-2 to the left-handed hitter. The wind's really picking up here in Mankato. The pitch dribbles. It's a ball, 1-2. One 1-2 and two. One and two the count. Uh, try and sit down and do this. Good luck there. As Arm Brewster's next offering. It should help with the wind anyway. Swing and a miss and a strikeout to start the game. She got her on some high cheese. Those are so hard to lay off of. Annika Takkenen steps in the left fielder. There's the left fielder for 14, Annika Takkenen. I could give you these batting averages. Takkenen's hitting 481 on the season. Edlund, by the way, was hitting 397. Another left handed hitter here. They're playing the bunt defense, the slap hitting defense. She squares the bunt and takes the bat back, and the umpire said it was a ball, 1 0. When you know somebody's going to bunt, you try and throw it high, get them to pop it up. That's exactly what Michaela did. As the righty arm booster gets back on that rubber and the pitch is high, it's 2 0. 2 0 the count to Annika Takkenen. Takkenen. Steps back in. She's right on top of the plate in the pitch. It's 3 0. Our booster, rare walks. I don't remember if I gave you a walk statistic, but she has not walked a lot of batters on the season. It's phenomenal on the pitch. Strike. Three and one. It was in the outside corner. If I didn't give you those walks, let's see if they're on here. There should be. Just ten walks all year. Swing and a miss and a high pitch. It's three and two. Yeah, the batter helped her out there because that would have definitely been ball four. Just ten walks all season. That's just... Amazing. Our Brewster's next pitch. It floats high. She wouldn't chase. So a walk with one out here in the first inning. That'll bring up Yvette Morgan, the young lady who's just been crunching the ball, hitting 586 with four homers. 
Now, Arm Brewster has given up five homers on the season. A lot of, you know, batters have been able to connect on her uh, fastball. Obviously used some of that power against her. She's got an outstanding changeup, though, and the pitch is right down Broadway for strike one. All in one, the count to Morgan wears number eight on the back of her uniform. With a runner at first and one out here in the top of the first in this state tournament game at Caswell Park. Big thank you to the Broster for bringing you our pregame. Pitches outside and it's one and one. Yep, wish I had some chicken right here. One and one, the count to Yvette Morgan. That runner at first with one out and the pitch. She jammed her, fouls it off, and it's one and two. That was a pitcher's pitch. She swung late on it, too. So we'll see if she brings out that changeup right here. You know, these young ladies have not seen, obviously. Arm Brewster, and it is an incredible changeup she has. Here it comes. Nope, swing. I thought she went. Yep. Umpire says she went. Strikeout number two. It was a fastball. It was a riser, not the uh, not the changeup. She tried to hold up, but I thought she went. The umpire obviously agreed. Gracie Fisher, the first baseman, steps in. Fisher is hitting 323 on the season. Where's number 17 on the back of her uniform? She's a sophomore, right-handed hitter, very open stance, and the pitch is a ball. One and all. Is outside, I guess. One and O oh is the count. There's a right-handed sophomore hitter steps back in, wiggling that bat in the pitch. Swing and a miss. One and one to Fisher. One and one to the right-handed inning first baseman. Two strikeouts of the two outs so far by Arm Brewster, which is obviously pretty common. She averages over 12 strikeouts a game. And the defense has to be on its toes. And the pitch, it's high. So two and one is the count. The scoreboard is not on here. It went out there for a second. Now they got it back on. Two and one is the count. Arm Brewster, the right-handed pitcher, delivers. She bunts it. It's no good, and there's a stolen base. And Ryan's throw is high. So Tackinen gets a stolen base to get into scoring position. She was showing bunt there, which is amazing with two outs. The scoreboard says two and one. It should be two and two, and it is two and two, because she went after that but missed it on a bunt. So runner in scoring position, the pitch is fouled straight back, two and two. Well, if I'm Michaela, and I'm not, but obviously if I'm Abby Van Ryan, I give the old changeup sign right here because she was right on that fastball. She hasn't shown it yet this inning. Give him something to think about, the pitch. Here it is. Oh, my. How he didn't call that a strike, I'll never know. That was a ball. And it was right down the slot, three and two the count. I think the changeup missed him up. Wow, and the pitch. That's a strike. Fastball at the knees, looking. So three strikeouts for the three outs of the first inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. One runner left in scoring position. We go to the bottom of the first. The Lumberjacks have not scored, and the Falcons, the mighty green machine, comes to the plate in one minute. Buying or selling a house doesn't have to be a stressful process. Weikert Realtors Heartland is there to help you every step of the way. Their dedicated and professional agents provide their knowledge and expertise for smart decisions in today's real estate market. They can help you find your current house value or find you that dream house you've been waiting to find. Buying or selling, Team Yellow is for you. Call 507-334-2173. Weikert Realtors Fairbo. 
Steel Wasika Cooperative Electric urges you to be alert to the dangers of working near overhead power lines. Each year, people are killed or injured when farm or construction equipment contact power lines. Stay at least 10 feet away in all directions. Getting too close is dangerous as electricity can arc or jump to conducting material or objects. If your equipment does come into contact with power lines and you are not in imminent danger, stay in the cab, call for help, and warn others nearby to stay away and wait until the electric utility arrives. Steel Wasika Cooperative Electric, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. We go to the bottom of the first. There are the Falcons in the section tournament in all but one game in the section tournament. They had a crooked number on the board in the first inning. They obviously like to continue that trend here at the state tournament. That would be awesome if they could continue that trend to the state tournament. You get a lights out pitcher like Armbrust, you give her a multi run lead. It has to give a sinking feeling to the opponent, right? The only game that they did not have multiple runs in the first inning was that loss to Mankato West. Remember in that final day of the section tournament when they lost the first game but came back to win the second game? Win the section, and they're here at the state tournament. The pitcher, again, for Bemidji is Gabby Takanen. Gabby Takanen is the pitcher. She has an 8 and 3 record, 72 innings pitch. 3.30 ERA, 33 strikeouts, 33 strikeouts in 72 innings. So she is not, statistically anyway, a strikeout pitcher. Takanen again is a junior. Allie Shack, a senior, steps in, the center fielder for the Falcons. Allie hitting 323 as a right hander's pitch is too high over her head. It's, oh, he called it a strike. Wow, 0-1. Oh, that was over her head. <laughs> uh, I gotta wait for the guy, I guess. That was that was really high. And the pitch jammed her. She's gonna swing and hit a base hit the left field. Allie Shack's got him started right. A single by Shack shortened her swing, got a single to left field, and that's the way to start the game. Runner at first, Michaela Armbruster will step up. Armbruster, in addition to being a phenomenal pitcher, very good hitter, hitting 424 on the season. She has 15 RBIs. They have six different players on this team that have double-digit RBIs in 22 games. That's pretty good. So Takanen gets ready to deliver the pitch, and it's swung on. Yeah, somebody right in front of me here again. And they call the runner out at first base. Armbruster hit the ball to third base. And when she threw it over to first base, Shaq went to second. So she's in scoring position. It's kind of like a bunt. It's a put out, and that'll bring up Bree Bresnahan. Bresnahan on the season is hitting 429 with 18 RBIs. She has 30 hits on the season. That leads the team as she steps in. Takanen delivers over the head. It looked like, again, that looked like the same pitch that was called a strike. This one's a ball. It's 1-0. and all. Almost has a little jump action to it at the last instant. Shaq has very good wheels, as you would expect of a leadoff hitter at second base. Swings at the next offing. Shortstop makes a great play. Throws to third. Big mistake by Shaq. Shaq went off on contact. It was hit right in front of her, the shortstop, and she's throwing out at third base. Six to five put out there. Bresnahan safe on the fielder's choice at first. Shaq's got to wait on that ball till the shortstop throws to first base. The ball's right in front of you. You have a base running error right off the bat, and that's that's been kind of a bugaboo, frankly, in, in, uh, in some games this season. Hasn't cost them really a game yet. Pitch is a strike 0 and 1 to Cassie Swanson. Swanson leads the team in homers with four. She has 18 RBIs, hitting 409 on the season, heading to St. Thomas to play fast pitch. And the pitch over the head. And I gotta wait because he called one a ball, a strike earlier. This is the ball. Swanson. I believe was one of the valedictorians of the class of 2018. They had six valedictorians, six, six of them. 
and the pitch bounces. Great stop by the catcher. Saves that runner from getting into scoring position. Terrible had a golden opportunity there. Shaq just waits. He's still in scoring position, even if she can't gain third base. And having a runner thrown out of third here in the first. You just can't make a lot of mistakes here at the state tournament. You usually get away with it. The pitch is inside. Three and one is the count to Cassie Swanson. And evidently they made some phone calls and did some scouting reports because they're trying not to pitch her anything for you <laughs> As Cassie digs back in with a runner at first base, two down, and the pitch is just low, and it's a walk. So we get another runner in scoring position, and we'll see if they can pick up their teammate there. That'll bring up Abby Van Ryan, the catcher. She's got to take off her shin guards here. Abby's a junior. Abby, 415 batting average. 21 RBIs to lead the team. This is the person you want up with ducks on the pond, the leading RBI person. She jogs into the batter's box after getting her shin guards off, steps in against Takanen. Takanen, the right-hander, does a little fidgeting of a ball in her glove. And the pitch. It's a strike. <laughs> In the umpire with a very slow call. He does it in three stages. He gets out of his crouch. <laughs> and now there's, I don't know what's going on here. The umpire is asking the base umpire about something. Oh, they're asking about the fans outside the outfield fence that are sitting out there. I think. Now, if I'm a batter, I would say something about that too. It's a distraction is what it is. I can't believe they allow it. There's lots of places to sit here. They don't have to be in the outfield fence. There's a high fly ball. The shortstop's going to catch it right on the edge of the grass. And the Falcons waste a golden opportunity right off the bat here in the first inning. They have a runner throwing out at third base. They do not score. They collect one hit. There's one hit. No errors. Two runners left. One of them in scoring position. We go to the top of the second for the Lumberjacks of Bemidji. It'll be hitters five, six, and seven facing Ms. Armbruster right after this one minute timeout. Reliance Bank of Faribault is a terrific way for you to support your favorite school and benefit yourself also. Get more details about their Faribault Falcon, Bethlehem Academy, or Medford Tiger debit cards. Open a free checking account like the green checking with no minimum balance, currently 1.5% APY on your deposits, and choose the Money Pass Visa card with a Falcon, Cardinal, or Tiger logo on it. A portion of the interchange fee on every point of sale transaction is donated back to your favorite school. Another way that Reliance Bank of Faribault is redefining service every day. Member FDIC and Equal housing lender. Thinking about your own funeral leaves most of us feeling a little uneasy. But more adults are finding by pre-planning their funeral, they're providing their family with greater emotional and financial security when that time comes. Parker Cole Funeral Home and Crematory at their new location in Faribault has been caring for families of all faiths in Faribault and the surrounding area since 1876. If you're considering pre-arranging your funeral, contact them. They'd be happy to walk you through the pre-planning process. Parker Cole Funeral Home Faribault, offering single pet cremation for your longtime companion. On the Deb Salmonson Remax Realty scoreboard, we have no scores. We go to the top of the second inning. All three outs in the first inning were via the strikeout, and there was a walk sandwiched in by Arm Brewster. She threw 12 strikes and nine balls, 21 total pitches. That's not normal for her to have that kind of a strikes to balls ratio. We'll see if she settles in here as McKenna Quinn steps in. Second baseman wears number four. She's a senior, a right-handed hitter in the pitch. Swing into this, and it's 0-1. 0-1 to McKenna Quinn. She's the number five hitter in the order for the Lumberjacks, looking for their 17th win and a big upset if they can pull it off. And the pitch, swing into this, and it's 0-2. Nothing fancy there. Armbruster's just throwing BBs here. Oh, and two. And the next offering. It's a high fly ball. Back, back, back. Goes the left fielder. Salmonson makes the catch. Wind might have held that up. You got to go that pretty well on an 0 and 2 count. That'll bring up Emma 
Stonick, the catcher. Stonick is a sophomore. Stonick wears number three on the back of her uniform as she steps in, the right-handed hitter, to face the righty arm Brewster. And the first offering is a strike on the inside corner at the knees. 0-1-1, a pitcher's pitch. Wearing a white ribbon in her hair. Arm Brewster does not wear a mask. Boy, if I were pitching, I would. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. 0-2. She swung at a pitch upstairs. In fact, her coach is telling her just that right now, man. She's got to come down before you swing at those things. So she's got her right where she wants her, the pitch. Swing and a miss. Three swings and three misses. Strikeout number four of the first six batters faced. That'll bring up Maddie Henson. Henson is a sophomore, a right-handed hitter. As Armbruster's pitch is inside a ball, 1 0. 1 0 to Maddie Hansen. Oh, I forgot to give you a batting average here. Maddie's hitting 319, right handed hitter. She's showing like she might bunt. The pitch is high. It's 2 0. So a hitter's count to a 319 hitter. No score. We're in the top of the second inning. Win or lose. Next game is at 5 o'clock today. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. And that riser, and it's 2-1. and one. Keela obviously has a very good riser. And has really put a lot of power into her pitch from a season ago. She was great last year. Swing and a miss. It's 2-2. Two and two. Two and 2 is the count to Maddie Hansen. Already four strikeouts of the first six batters faced, and that one's right down Broadway, and she watched it go by. Strikeout number five for Arm Brewster. Well, Michaela looks locked in. Let's see if we can get those bats locked in. No runs, no hits, there were no errors. Nobody left on base. We go to the bottom of the second inning for Farrell, it'll be hitters six, seven, eight in the order. No score here at the state tournament. Boy, I tell you, Farrell Interiors, they are terrific people to work with. Yep, we do our Faribault Coaches Show, and actually we've expanded it to be more than just the coaches, more than just the athletes. We've had some people involved in theater. We've had a robotics team out there. We've been trying to get the trap shooters, so if trap shooters are listening, we'd love to have you pop on up. We're going to do a wrap-up spring show here in a week or so on a Saturday. Come on out to Faribault Interiors, and we'll talk about, hopefully, a state championship from the fast pitch team and the we got some track and field. We wish the best of luck to Lauren Isaacson and Megan Gurkey from the Faribault High School and Avery Hunt from BA at the state track and field meet, which starts tomorrow and ends on Saturday with the uh, finals. Of course, Gurkey was an all-state trackster a year ago in both the shot put and the discus, if I remember right. As Faribault Interiors, I've always called it a candy store for decorators, and that's exactly what it is. They can help you with cabinetry work. They can assist you with countertops from flooring. Well, I was in there just the other day seeing Sam and the gang, and they had a young gentleman and a young lady there that were getting items for their entire house that they just built. You can do that, too. Faribault Interiors, Wilson Avenue, across from the Faribault Chamber. Abby Lake, sophomore, steps in. Right fielder, right-handed hitter. Got to find my stats now. What did I do with those? As Abby steps in, she's really done a nice job here. She's coming on a couple weeks into the season. Has a 235 batting average, but she's made the most of her hits. 12 hits, 8 RBIs. And a pitch. Swings at the first offering. Third baseman, a great stab. Throws over to first. What a play by the third baseman. Wow. For Bemidji, that was a stellar play. That ball was smashed right down the third baseline. That would have been extra bases. Hanson, I believe, is their third baseman. That was an awesome play by the third baseman. Robbed a lake of a hit. So that'll bring up the Salmonson. Or excuse me, this is uh, Ellie Knutson. She squares the bump, brings the bat back, and I don't know what the umpire called. I think it's a ball. I don't know. 
Knutson's the third baseman. Salmonson's up next. He's on deck. And the righty's pitch is swung on. It's going to be swung on late. It'll be a foul ball. And now Knutson's in a one and one count. Knutson, the fastest player on the team, so that's why she often gets at least a bunt hit in every game, it seems. Third baseman's creeping up. Like I said, they got a scouting report on these Falcons. And the pitch. Squares the bunt. It's bunted right back to the pitcher, though. That should be easy pickings, and it is. You can't have the bunt right back to the pitcher. You got to really be speedy Gonzalez to beat that. So that'll bring up Cameron Selmanson. Cameron wears number 15. Left fielder made a nice catch earlier in the game. So she steps in. There's no score. We're in the bottom of the second. Two down. Three straight have been retired by this pitcher. And the pitch. Swings and falls it off. Oh, and one to count. Oh, and one to Cameron Selmanson. Right-handed hitter steps back in. She does have some power. They are playing her to pull her, too. There's a gaping hole in right center field, and the pitch is a ball, one and one, rolled in the dirt. One and one is the count. Deep sigh from Salmonson as he taps the plate and steps back in against the righty Takanen. He's done a great job against this very good Falcon lineup so far. The pitch is uh, high. It's a ball, two and one. So two and one is the count. No score. Farrell Bowl kind of squandered a golden opportunity in the first inning. Had a runner thrown out at third on a ground ball hit in front of her. She ran to third anyway. It's ball three. So three and one to Salmonson. This has to be in your wheelhouse to be swinging at this. I can't believe that gaping hole in right center field. She hits it there. She could have a triple. As the pitcher's pitch. A swing and a miss, and it's three and two. Three and two the count to Cameron Salmonson. Now there could be a few jitters here, but I, like I said, they've played here before. This should be a familiar surroundings, and that shouldn't be an issue for the Faribault Falcons. And the pitch. Jammed her, hit at the third base. I would never throw at the third base after watching this girl twice. She's made a great play. She robbed Armbruster of a hit, and she robbed uh, Lake of a hit, and she just made another nice play. So don't hit at the third base. <laughs> We go to the top of the third. It'll be hitters eight, nine, and one in the order for the Bemidji Lumberjacks. They're hanging in with a number one ranked team in the state. We have no score yet. Back in one minute. In fast pitch softball, having a good defense is essential. Not giving additional outs to any team increases your chances of winning with multiple quality plays keeping the score down. Same is true in real estate. Remax Experts Realtor Deb Salmonson has 23 years experience selling real estate. 23 years experience selling in the Faribault area. That can save seller and buyer. Check out her website and see a number of testimonials from people at Deb Salmonson Remax Experts.com. It's a seller's market right now, so the perfect time to list a home. Call Deb for a free market analysis. 507-210-1005. Our Shamble Brothers Disposal of Faribault has been serving the Faribault area for over six decades. The same local, family-owned business has been assisting families and businesses. Randy and the whole Our Shamble Disposal family would like to thank their many loyal customers. Three generations of Our Shambles have strived to treat their customers like family. It's not just picking up garbage to them. Service and relationships are why Our Shamble Brothers Disposal's in the business. If you'd like to be part of the Our Shamble Brothers Disposal family, just phone 334 Eight nine oh one zero. At the conclusion of our broadcast, we're going to have our our Shamble Brothers disposal pick up of the game. Yeah, they do a great job of picking up refuse, recyclables. You got those roll-offs, dumpsters. Yep, you check it out. Our Shamble Brothers disposal proud to be the Faribault Area Chamber of Commerce Business of the Year 2018. 
As we go to the top of the third, it'll be 8, 9, and 1 in the order. First pitch is a ball. Looked like a high strike, but it's called a ball 1-0. 1-0 oh. oh, the count. Now we've had a strike called with a pitch over a batter's head. And a strike not called with a pitch that was high in the, I think, the strike zone. That pitch looked to be outside, and he calls it a strike. 1-1 one one the count to Savannah Baki. Designated player, that's what they call it in fast pitch, is basically a DH. And the righty's pitch. Swing and a miss, and it's one and two. Boy, she liked that pitch. She really took a hack at it, did Baki. She's hitting for the pitcher, Takanen. Has that tippy toe on the front foot in the pitch. Swing and a miss, and she almost screwed herself into the ground on that one. Three straight strikeouts for Arm Brewster. They can score some runs. You can't win if you don't score. Falcons look like they'll be in pretty good shape. Brooke Hildenbrand steps in. Hildenbrand is a senior right-handed hitter. Wears number two on the back of her uniform. She's hitting 263. 15 hits on the season. Starts her off with a right down the pipe fastball, and it's 0-1. 0-1. She meant business last inning, throwing just 11 total pitches after 21 pitch first inning. Next offering is another strike. It's 0-2. 0-2 to Brooke Hildenbrand, the number nine batter. If she gets struck out, seven of nine would be struck out first time through. Jammed her, and she swings and misses. Strikeout number seven of nine batters faced. That'll bring up Samantha Edland, who struck out to start the game. There's only been one out recorded in this game that was not a strikeout. It was a fly out that Salmonson made a nice running catch on to start last inning. So the left-handed Edland steps back in with two outs and the pitch. They're thinking bunt here. Swing and a miss on one. The second baseman O'Neill has that anti-slap hitting or bunting defense on, and now she's told to back up a bit, I think. 0-1 to count to Edland. Arm Brewster's next pitch is right on the outside corner. Perfect pitch, and it's 0-2. Boy, it's got to feel sagging for a team. They're just going up and down with strikeout after strikeout in the next pitch. Strike free call to the outside corner. She watched it go by. Eight strikeouts of the 10 batters faced by Arm Brewster. Wow. Here in the top of the third, no runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. We go to the bottom of the third. We'll see if the Falcons can get their bats going. Nine, one, and two in their order in one minute. Hi, Cody here with Harley's Auto Salvage, right across from the Rice County Fairgrounds. We've been here since 1952 and are proud to be Faribault's largest recycler. Be sure to check out our drive through recycling building. We can recycle your aluminum cans, copper, brass, and metal. And we're your source for new and used auto parts. If we don't have it, we can locate it on our nationwide locating system. Plus, we'll pay you top dollar for your junk vehicle, and we'll pick it up. Be sure to like and follow us on Facebook. Harley's Auto Salvage, across from the fairgrounds in Faribault. Judd Osterman and Demerol Limited is a local independent firm of certified public accountants serving Southern Minnesota. They provide a full range of services for individuals, small businesses, and corporations in many industries. They take pride in their local identity and the personal relationships they have developed with their clients. JOD is large enough to provide a full range of services, small enough to assure individual attention, and dedicated enough to take interest in your success. Online at jodcpa.com. We go to the bottom of the third. You just joined us, Fairboy, a golden opportunity to score in the first inning anyway, and the way Arm Brewster's throwing it might have been enough, but they ran into it out as they've done a bit this season. The number nine batter. Second base, number 20, Lauren O'Neill. Lauren O'Neill, the second baseman, steps in. This young lady's got some good wheels, too. Left-handed hitter. As Tacken and Stone, 21 pitches through two innings. That's about perfect. 13 strikes. Pitches over her head. She had to duck, so I don't think he'll call that a strike. One and all the count. Called one earlier, one strike. <laughs> one and all oh to Lauren O'Neill, left handed hitter. And the pitch is over her head again. Two and all. Oh. A lot of things over my head. 
on the Deb Salmonson Remax Realty scoreboard. We have no score. It's nothing, nothing. We're in the bottom of the third. Faribault, the number one seed, number one ranked team in the state in Class 3A, and the Bemidji Lumberjacks with eight losses on the year. She swings at the next pitch, hits it straight back, and it's two and one. O'Neill has turned into a very, very accomplished hitter. Lauren hitting 273. But she's got 12 RBIs and 15 hits. That's maximizing your hits. Bunt missed. Strike. Two and two. She got a bat on the ball, but it ended up being a ball. So it's two and two. I honestly thought they might start her with a bunt. So now, oh, well, wait a minute. She's out. I guess they called her out of the batter's box on a bunt. So Ali Shack will step in. I did not see that. I have a horrible view here. I love state tournaments where you can't even see, basically. Uh, two sets of fencing in front of you. And people, too. And the pitch is inside for a ball, 1-0. and all. So she must have uh, been out of the box. Only thing I could guess. He still got those fans outside the right field fence. And the pitch is the late call strike. One and one to Allie Shack. Singled in the first inning. It was a 0-1 count. She just shortened her stroke and poked it out to left field. That's been the only hit by Farrell in this game. The only one. See if they can get these bats going here. And the pitch. It's hammered to left field. That's a line drive, and it is out of here. Allie Sheck goes into the home run trot as she crosses second base. Allie Sheck cranks a homer to make it one nothing Faribault, and we'll see if that relaxes the rest of the team at the plate. One and one count, line drive, homer to left field. And the Falcons have the lead. Umpire walks out a new softball to the pitcher Takanen. Now, unfortunately for Faribault, nobody was on base, but it is a solo shot. The Falcons have the lead. Armbruster will step up. She hit a ground at a third. Third baseman's made three incredibly nice plays. I mean, some balls have been scorched her way. She's robbed a couple of extra bases on that third baseline. Nobody's tried to bunt against her yet. You know, the bunts that have been tried, they tried to bunt back to the pitcher, and, and that might have been in the... Oh, now the umpire is is marking the line where the batter's box is because Michaela Armbruster was... Well, she was out of the box, and he took the bat and made a marking and said that's where the batter's box is. <laughs> and the pitch swings and hits it right back to the pitcher. So that'll be the second out. Two down, that'll bring up Bree Bresnan, who is safe on a fielder's choice in the first inning. She hit the ball to short, and Shaq was at second base, took off for third before the shortstop had released the ball to throw to first, and she was easy pickings at third base. So Bresnan steps in. She's got some good pop in her bat, too, as we have said. She has a homer on the season. Hits one to third base. That's where you don't want to throw it. She's out. <laughs> Hit it right to the third baseman. And that young lady can field. Has a good arm, too. Well, Faribault does get on the board. One run on one hit. The solo homer by Ali Shack. It was Shack's second homer of the season. Remember, she had a home run. I think it was in the Mankato East game in the section tournament that started that game. When I mean, they put up a crooked number against Mankato East. No crooked number, though, here in the third. One run, one hit, no errors, nobody left on base. We played three complete on the Deb Salmonson Remax Realty scoreboard. It is one to nothing Falcons after three complete. Verbal Falcons have one run. They have two hits. They have no errors and have left two runners on base, one in scoring position. That was in the first inning. Bemidji has no runs, no hits. They have no errors and have left one runner on base, and that one runner was in scoring position. That was also in the first inning. We go to the top of the fourth inning. 
Again, at the conclusion of our game, we'll have our R. Shamble Brothers disposal pickup of the game. It'll be a fielding play by the Falcons so far. Uh, Cameron Salmonson's got that because she's the only one that's even had a fielded ball. <laughs> They've been all strikeouts by Michaela Armbruster. So, so far, it's Cameron Salmonson's award. And, of course, we'll have our Faribault State Farm Insurance Agents Faribault player or players of the game at the conclusion of our broadcast. Yep, a home run by Ali Shack. You'll always score great quality when you go to Star Trophy and Apparel and Faribault. Yep. They do a terrific job. They're just in there the other day. They've got all kinds of apparel for you. You name it. Young lady was hanging up some, I believe it was Waterville Elysian Morristown socks. Yep. As the number two, three, and four hitters will step up for Bemidji. They'll try and see if they can't get on the scoreboard here. Down one nothing. They tried to bump the start. It's a strike. 0-1. Annika Takanen, the left fielder steps in. Where's number 14 on her uniform? She's a sophomore. Annika on the season is hitting 481. Left-handed hitter. Number two hitter in the order. She's the person who walked in the first inning. And the pitch. Strike. Right down Broadway. It's 0-2. 0-2 oh, to Tackinen. There's a line drive homer by Shaq. And the pitch. Swings and misses, and she's out. Strikeout number nine for Armbruster of 11 batters faced. The only batters that haven't struck out were walked and hit a fly ball to left field on an 0-2 count. So Morgan steps in the shortstop. The young lady who came into the state tournament hitting 586. Right-handed hitter. And the pitch. Four homer swing and a miss. 0-1-1. She even tried to shorten her swing on that one, I could tell. 0-1 oh, the count. Good teams make adjustments at the plate. You can't not be a good team and come to the state tournament. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. And it's 0-2. And, and you got to make adjustments as a pitching a battery as well. Abby Van Ryan calls all the pitches. I have not seen Michaela shake her off too often. And the pitch. Tried to waste one. She wouldn't chase. It's one and two. That's a good pitch. In fact, you got one to waste here again if you want to. Biggest issue, I think, for especially young pitchers. Too good of pitches on. Pops up the ball. And I think it's going to make, yep, it makes the uh, sidewalk here outside the field. Some guy was bringing in his grandbaby. And he was protecting that grandbaby from the ball. <laughs> it's awesome. One and two to Morgan. And the pitch. There's the changeup. Pops it up. Bresnan calls for it behind the second base bag and makes the catch. <coughs> two down. That'll bring up Grace Fisher. Now remember, win or lose, Faribault plays his second game today, so I'm sure you'd kind of like to conserve a little energy of your Michaela in the pitch. is a ball to Gracie Fisher. She struck out looking her first time up. Arm Brewster has struck out, well, virtually everybody in the lineup at least once. The only person not is the next batter. There is a ball too low. It's 2-0. and oh. So 2-0 to oh, Fisher, the cleanup hitter, who obviously is a power hitter, has four homers. So she could tie the game up with one swing. There's two outs here. And the pitch. Jander hits it right to Resnan. Looked like she threw her the ball. So here in the fourth inning, no runs, no hits, no errors. So far, Armbruster has a no-hitter going. She did have a walk in the first inning, so that ends the perfect game. But she has a no-hitter going. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It'll be hitters four, five, and six in the order for Faribault. With a one nothing lead, Deb Salmonson, Remax Realty scoreboard. She's got over 20 years of experience that she can put to work for you back in one minute. Hi, this is Chris from Garlic's Water. Are you fed up with fighting rust stains and hard water problems at home? We have a system that can solve all your headaches. 
a Connecticut water system. We have a wide range of Connecticut water systems to fix any problem, big or small. Give me a call at 800-722-1282 or go online at garlicswater.com and let me show you what I can do to help. At Garlic's Water, your water has never been treated so well. Garlic's Water. With First United Bank in Faribault, you may be able to buy a home with only 3% down. The good news does not end there. Qualified buyers will also receive a $5,000 grant to use for funds towards down payment and or closing costs. This program is not just for first-time home buyers. Contact the mortgage team at First United Bank today, Debbie Nelson or Chris O'Neill, for complete details. Get closer to your new home purchase with 3% down. First United Bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender, NMLS, number 486008. We go to the fourth inning. Cassie Swanson, the leading round tripper. I'm not talking about the Beatles here. I'm talking about own runs. The leading round tripper for the Falcons. With four homers on the season will lead things off. She walked in the first inning. They did not want to pitch to her. <laughs> it was pretty obvious. So tacking in. First pitch. Ooh, that was a pretty good pitch. And Cassie watched it go by, 0-1. We're in the top of the, or excuse me, the bottom of the fourth inning. Tacking and throwing 31 pitches through three innings, 20 of them strikes. She has not struck out a single batter, but you don't have to strike people out to be effective. She's only given up the home run and the single to Shaq, and that's hammered to left field. It's going to go all the way to the fence. Swanson's going to round second base. She gets into second with a stand-up double. Just absolutely tattooed the ball. Did Cassie Swanson lead off double? Will bring up Abby Van Ryan, the number one RBI person on the team. Her first time up, Abby popped out to the shortstop. Level swing here for Abby. They're thinking she'll pull the ball, gaping hole in right center field for Abby, too. She just pooched one over the second baseman's head, she'd have a triple. She tried to bunt. The ball's way over her head. She brought the bat back. It's 1-0. and all. Interesting. Your number one RBI person, you're going to bunt with a runner at second base. Nobody out. As she steps back in, and the pitch. It looked high to me. It looked high to the umpire. It's 2-0. and all. So a hitter's count now to Van Ryan. Ma'am! I can't see. Oh, now I gotta stand up again. So you get my wind. And the pitch is popped up. Third baseman, and remember, you're not supposed to hit it to her, makes the catch in fall territory. So. With a runner at second base, Abby Lake will step in. Now, Lake has got some power to the opposite field. I've seen it time and again. And again, there's a gaping hole in right center field. They're expecting uh, Faribault to pull her in. They obviously have so far in the pitch. is up high. One and O oh, to count to Abby Lake. Faribault leads at one nothing. Got another runner sitting at second base. One out here in the fourth inning. As a right-hander Takkenen's pitch, jammed her, it's popped up. Catcher makes the catch, out number two. Ellie Knudsen will step up. Well, he had a leadoff double by Swanson, and she's still at second base. The Falcons might be pressing a little bit here at the plate, you know. Just relax, do what you've done all year. Should be in good shape. She's very up in the box as uh, well that line that the and the pitch. Yeah, it's a strike. <laughs> 0 and 1. Newton very close to being out of the box here too. I mean very close. And the righty's next pitch. Bunts it. That's a beauty. Third baseman charges, throws the first. She's safe at first base. Yep, she hesitated just a little bit before she threw, and you cannot hesitate when Ellie's running to first base. So Swanson goes to third on the bunt by Knutson for a single. It's a bunt single. 
Bunt for a hit all the way. And Cameron Salmonson will step up. And the Falcons need some two-out hitting here. Get a crooked number on the board. They're up 1-0 here in the fourth inning. Winner of this game, well, the loser, too, plays at 5 o'clock today. If the, either way, we'll have the Falcon game at 5. And the pitch, changeup, misses, run down to second base. She is out at second base. Boy, that is gambling, man. That is gambling. So another runner's out on the base pads for Faribault as they try to send Ellie Knutson. Now, she is their fastest player, but there are two outs. You have a runner at third base. They send Ellie Knutson. The throw through was perfect, and she is out. Tried to slide under the tag, but was not able to do so. So here in the bottom of the fourth, no runs cross the plate. Faribault squanders another golden opportunity. They had a leadoff double. They had two hits in the inning. Have four hits and just one run to show for it. No errors. And one runner was perched at third base when this inning came to a close. And the Deb Salmonson Remax Realty scoreboard is one nothing Falcons on the solo homer by Shaq in the third. We go to the top of the fifth. Arm Brewster's been lights out good. She'll have to continue to be as hitters five, six, and seven come to the plate for Bemidji in one minute. Pleasant New Estates offers independent living, assisted living, and enhanced assistance on Faribault's picturesque east side. The fact that it's adjacent to a skilled nursing facility makes it ideal if your loved one needs more care. Move can be made without literally going outdoors, or if their spouse needs care, they can live right next door. Staff available 24 hours a day with call buttons in each apartment, full apartments with full kitchens, walk-in showers, cable and internet access, daily activities, a great way to make new friends going through the same part of their life journey. Take a tour soon. Pleasant View Estates Faribault, because the journey matters matters. Bolt Funeral Home in Faribault understands their work with families often comes at a difficult time. That's why they're specially trained in pre-planning so the basics can be completed hopefully long before the services are needed. Bolt Funeral Home provides traditional and cremation services with the most compassionate care. Many generations of families have trusted their loved ones in the care of Bolt Funeral Home with generations of experience and decades of trust. Proud of their five generations of Faribault Falcon graduates, visit their website, boltfuneralhome.com, for more details about their services. Well, taking the first pitch, and I really don't understand that. I mean, Armbruster throws nothing but strikes. There's strike two. I mean, now you're in an 0 2 hole because you took the first pitch. Not that I'm, you know, complaining, but I just don't understand. If I'm the other team, I think I'd be a little more aggressive. And the pitch. Swings at a riser and catches up with it and fouls it off. I don't know how she hit that ball. 0 and 2 the count. It was over her head. Where's number four in the back of her uniform? McKenna Quinn. She steps in. Everybody in this game has been very up in the box. And the righties pitch. Almost chased the ball out of the strike zone. She didn't. It's 1 and 2. 1 and 2 to Quinn. One nothing, Falcons lead it. We're in the top of the fifth inning. These are seven inning games. And the pitch, swing and a miss. And she's gone, strikeout number 10 for Arm Brewster. And we're in the fifth inning. 10 of 14 batters have been struck out by the junior right-hander from Faribault. Emma Stonic steps in, the catcher. She struck out swinging in the second inning. And now she has struck out every single batter in the order at least once. Quinn had flown out the left field her first time up. First pitch here is a strike, and again, she does not swing. It's 0-1. I really thought they might change their approach and start hacking at the first pitch. Righty's next offering. Swings and misses, and now you're down 0-2. Arm Brewster's got her right where she wants her. You don't want to throw her too good a pitch here. We got more fans in the outfield. Behind the outfield fence. Next pitch is outside. It's 1-2. and two. Coming into this inning, 53 pitches, 38 of them strikes for Arm Brewster. First inning, she threw 21 pitches. Might have been a little nerves as a righty's pitch. Oh, a beautiful pitch at the knees on the inside corner. You should have seen the look that Emma Stonick gave the umpire. Strikeout number 11. It, I thought it was a perfect pitcher's pitch. I will admit I'm probably a little partial. Maddie Hansen steps in, struck out looking in the second inning. She's also very up in the box. Wondering when the umpire's going to grab that bat again and make the line. Pitches, they keep creeping up. A strike on the inside corner, 0-1. 
And I don't know why they creep up so much. I suppose they want to catch the ball before it rises. And the pitch on a riser is high, one and one. One and one to the right-handed hitting third baseman. This young lady can feel. Our Brewster's next pitch is right down the slot for a strike. One and two. I mean, that was right down Broadway. One and two. Let's see if we got another mowing down inning here for Arm Brewster in the pitch. Swing and miss. Boy, she almost swung out of her shoes. Twelve strikeouts for Arm Brewster. The last two batters, she has struck out twice in the game. Here in the top of the fifth, no runs, no heads. There were no Falcon errors. Can't have those when nobody's hitting the ball. Nobody left on base. The no-hitter continues for Arm Brewster here in the state tournament. We go to the bottom of the fifth, eight, nine, and one in the order for the Faribault Falcons. I want to invite you to swing by. Yep, make sure you swing by Bashers. J&J Bowling Center, boy, they've got that great bowling special, $40 for bowling. Good Monday through Thursday. You bowl three games each day, and it includes shoe rental. This is through the end of August. This is all summer long. Get in there and take advantage of this, folks. You do the math. You get to bowl three games each day, Monday through th Thursday. That's 12 games, right? $40 for the entire summer. So if you do this each week through the end of August, it's only 40 bucks. Oh, wow, what a deal. And again, that includes shoe rental. They're open until eight at the bowling center. And of course they have delicious food. Everybody knows the best ribs around are at Bashers, the J&J Bowling Center. We go to the bottom of the fifth. It'll be eight, nine, and one in the order for the Parable Falcons. We'd love to get some insurance runs here on the board. for Arm Brewster. It doesn't look like she needs them, but it would still be nice to have them. Salmonson will step in, hit a grounder to third. Nam! Nam! First pitch is a ball, 1-0. Oh. Well, I have to repeat it, I'll never know. 1-0 oh, the count. They don't let announcers, or they don't let fans stand in front of their PA announcers, but they don't care about broadcasters. And the pitch is inside for a ball. It's 2-0. Oh. There should be nobody but broadcasters up here. 2-0 oh, the count to Cameron Salmonson. I think most of these people are coaches up here. And the right-hander's pitch. Is inside for a ball. It's three and zero to Salmonson, and they'll take a leadoff walk. Well, I highly doubt that Cameron's going to have the green light here. Lauren O'Neill's on deck. Called out of the batter's box, I think, in the her first at bat. Only thing I can figure they called her out for. It was a second strike in the pitch. Swings a three and oh, she swung. I don't believe it. Shortstop throws her out at first base. Wow, she had the green light on three and oh. Second base, Lauren O'Neill. So one down that'll bring up Lauren O'Neill. My oh my. O'Neill looks on her pad as Coach Silver signals a number. I always thought it would be pretty easy to steal a sign that way. Let's say a bunt is number three, unless they change it each at bat. I don't know. But, and the pitch up high, 1-0. Well, no. <laughs> Terrible continues to make some little mistakes that get magnified when you're at the state tournament. As the righty's pitch. Swung on, it's a high fly ball, lazy fly ball that the center fielder will catch. Two down, and that'll bring up Allie Shack. Shack hit a solo homer last time up a line drive. She singled in the first inning. She and Swanson and Ellie Knutson are the only people to have hits in this game. Shack's got two of them. 
and is definitely a candidate for one of our Faribault State Farm Insurance Agents Faribault Players of the Game, courtesy of your Faribault State Farm Insurance Agents, Jason Crone and Tony Langerud, like a good neighbor State Farm is there. First pitch, strike called, and it was high. 0-1-1. Oh, There's so another one of those around the head that he called the strike. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I just keep throwing them up there if I'm pitching. And the righty's pitch. She jammed it. Oh, my. She that almost was another homer. She turned on it too quickly. And, boy, Allie's showing some very good power here in the playoffs. Both our homers have come in the playoffs. The pitcher calling for time to tie her shoe. Tackening gets back up on that rubber, wipes the dirt off. 0-2 is the count to Shaq with two outs here in the fifth inning. Turbo's only got four hits in this game. Tackening's next pitch as he takes the deep side, change up, ripped foul. Boy, Ali seeing the ball looks like a watermelon flying up there today. Why do people call when you're on the air? <laughs> I mean, seriously. 0-2 is still the count to Ali Shack. Tackinen's next offering. Change up, popped up. It's gonna go out of play over the Falcon third base dugout, still 0-2. 0-2 the count here in the fifth inning. One nothing, Carabo leads. Ali Shack, the lady at the plate right now, did a line drive homer in the third inning. It was on a one and one count. And the pitch. It's high. Catcher tried to bring it back over the plate. The umpire said, uh uh, I'm not buying that. One and two. One and two is still the count. As the umpire gets a new softball. A lot of fans out behind the fence again, and they're wearing gold shirts. And, of course, the ball is yellow. They're right behind the outfield fence. Those are Hayfield Viking fans, I think. And the pitch up high. It is two and two. I was actually a little surprised they were pitching to her earlier. She almost jacked one out of here hit that ball. I mean, she had a home run earlier. There's two outs. Arm Brewster seen two pitches, two outs in the pitch. Hit right past the third baseman is a fair ball. Shaq was interfered with by the first baseman. The umpire didn't see it. As she was rounding first base, the first baseman's shoulder brushed up against Shaq. She should be at second base. I don't think the Faribault coaches saw it either. That was interference on her. It'll be a single. I don't know why the umpire isn't looking for that. She thrust her shoulder into her, which actually kind of knocked her, knocked it into her. Yes. Oh, I, I thought the umpire was going to make that move. He's changing his umpires. Well, isn't that interesting? The home plate umpire is telling the base umpires to go to different spots on the field. She was clearly interfered with rounding first base. That ball was, you know, with Shaq speed, might have been able to get a double out of that. And the pitch. That ball's hit right back up the middle by Armbruster. And Shaq hopefully stays at second. Yes, she does. So Armbruster loves to swing at the first pitch, gets a single on the first pitch, and that'll bring up Bree Bresnan. Going into run for Armbruster will be Lindsay O'Neill. She's the other pitcher. Terrible is hoping, I think, that they could get a big lead in this game and rest Michaela. But that's not the case when you only have one nothing. You know, to conserve her energy for the second game at five. That game plan's not worked thus far. This has all happened with two outs, though. Bresnan steps up. Two outs, runners at first and second. Bresnan looking for first hit of the day. She was safe on a fielder's choice in the first inning. A ball hit to short. Shaq went. She was at second, went to third, was easily thrown out at third base. As the righty tacking and fidgets with the ball in her glove and delivers. 
Chandler is hung up right up the middle. Rounding third is Shaq. Here comes the throw, and she scores. Bresnahan with an RBI single. Straight up the middle. And the Falcons making adjustments here, not trying to be too fancy, not trying to pull the ball. Remember the defense we told you was shifted like they would pull. Last couple of hits have been right up the middle. Shaq's single was right down the third baseline and could have been a double again. She rounded first, the first baseman had her shoulder rubbed right into Shaq. And I mean, it wasn't a, it wasn't a grazing either. It was a solid hit. Ball's up high for a ball, 1-0. and all. I'm really surprised that the Faribault coaches didn't see that. Or maybe they didn't ignore it. I don't know. Swanson, 1-0, and all, doubled her last time up. She hits a double here. We got two more runs. 2 nothing Faribault right now. And the pitch. A change up high. Fly ball hit right to the center fielder. And that will end the inning. The Faribault does tack on another run to make it a 2 nothing game here in the bottom of the fifth. They collect back to back to back singles. I don't know where the error was that the uh, announcer just announced because I did not see an error. <laughs> and uh, two runners left on base, one of them in scoring position. We go to the top of the sixth. Our Brewster's got an extra run to work with. It's 2 0 Feral Ball on the Deb Salmonson Remax Realty scoreboard. Let her put her 20 plus years of real estate knowledge, not just real estate knowledge, but knowledge of the Feralball market to work to you for you, whether you're buying or selling a home, back in one minute. Stuck in a state of falling behind, struggling to keep up with your kids, your finances, your insurance, your life? Then let Jason Crone Agency help simplify to get to a better state. Because with Jason's office handling your auto, home, and life insurance, you'll have more time to handle everything else. More money, too, because adding State Farm policies can earn discounts that could save you up to 40% and actually help you get ahead. Call me, Jason Crone, State Farm Agency, today to get to a better state with State Farm. Hey there! As a paperclip, I am all for bundling. But with things like internet streaming and TV, I have my limits. After all, I'm just a twisted piece of metal. That's where Consolidated Communications comes in. Right now, add TV and 20 megs of internet and get free showtime for two years. With no data cap, downtime, or delays, all while saving a bundle. And I know a thing or two about bundles. When you want to keep it all together, visit Consolidated.com or call 844-YOUR-CCI today. Services not available in all areas and very by location. Terms and conditions apply. Michaela Armbruster has struck out 12. We're in the top of the sixth. And these are seven inning games. Armbruster has thrown 66 pitches through five innings. 48 of them strikes. As Savannah Baki, the number eight hitter, the DP steps in, right-handed hitter. She struck out in the third inning. And the pitch. Well, now they tell her not to pitch. They got the grounds crew going behind the outfield. Now, why would they stop her from throwing the pitch with a grounds crew in the outfield when they got hundreds of fans out there? <laughs> Here we go. Swing and a miss. It's 0-1. She was just about to throw the ball, and the umpire said no, and the uh, ground screw guy's out there, and he's out there, and his vest is the same color as the ball. Exactly the same color as the ball. The pitch is up high. The arm booster, I love it. If I'm the batter, I say, now, wait a minute here. Nobody's gotten a hit off this girl, and you're going to let people with yellow shirts sit in the outfield? <laughs> the righty's pitch. Oh, my, that looked good, and it is good. One and two on the outside corner, perfect pitcher's pitch. They have not changed their mode of operation here at all. They're not swinging at first pitches and getting in holes. And the pitch, swing, you're going to miss. And again, an awkward-looking swing, number 13 strikeout. I'll bring up Brooke Hildenbrand. They have 
not a lot of information on the stat sheets for the high school league, which is why I love having Faribault's, where I got everything. Squares to bunt, it's a strike, 0-1-1. On on. Now, some people would have a problem with this. Arm boosters throwing a no-hitter, and they're trying to bunt. I do not have a problem with that. You're trying to win a game. shouldn't matter. And it's only 2 to nothing. You'd love to be only down by one going into the last inning if you could do that. The pitch, swing into this. You swung away. It's 0-2. They took the bunt off. There is one out. But they haven't been able to get a hit off her, so I guess I'm surprised they didn't try that sooner. They haven't really tried to bunt at all. Obviously not part of their game. Pitch is a strike. She's gone. Number 14. Let's see here. One... Two, three, that's the fourth strikeout looking in this game, and that'll bring up Samantha Edlund. The leadoff hitter is 0 for 2 with a strikeout swinging and a strikeout looking. The strikeout looking was good morning, good afternoon, good night. Left-handed hitter, the pitch. It's high, 1-0. Oh. It might have been a high strike. Abby kept it for the umpire framed and he would not give the strike the pitch that's on the outside corner for a strike one and one the count to Samantha Edlin and again on the first pitch obviously the umpire thought it was a ball but it was up in the zone and the hit of a pitch I thought next pitch a half hearted swing and it's one and two one and two Edlin wears number 13 on her uniform. She looks very upset at herself. She takes a deep sigh as she steps out of the box because she's really helped out Arm Brewster on that swing. Arm Brewster looking for strikeout number 15 and her sixth strikeout in a row in this game. And the pitch outside would not chase one and two. One walk is the only base runner in this game. For Bemidji, they did steal second base with one out of the first inning, but then strikeouts of the three and four hitter, and that ended that potential. That ball's hit very well. Going back, back, back is Lake, and she'll gauge it and make the catch. A lazy fly ball to right field ends the sixth. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We go to the bottom of the sixth, and Faribault hopes this is the last at bats because, well, that would mean they won the game, right? They don't have to bat in the bottom of the seventh. They lead it two to nothing. It'll be hitters five, six, and seven in the order for the Falcons, looking for win number 21 and a berth into the semifinals of the Class 3A state tournament. Back in one minute. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers was founded by 10 men over a century ago. Since then, women have made IBEW Local 110 a rewarding place to work, learn, and thrive. This rewarding career offers women and men equal pay, benefits, and the best training in the electrical industry. Visit the work tab on IBEWpros.org to find out more about an electrical career. Get your next electrical project done on time and on budget. That's the IBEW Local Union 110's power of professionalism. Hello, I am Craig Patterson, and I'm thrilled to be Hometown Credit Union's new mortgage lender for the Faribault office. I have been a mortgage lender for over 25 years, and I love helping people achieve their dream of affordable home ownership. Apply online, call, or stop by today to see just how easy it is to be at home with Hometown Credit Union. Equal housing lender, member NCUA. All right. Abby Van Ryan steps up. She's looking for her first hit today. Very up in the box. 0 for 2 with a pop out to short and a pop out to third. And the pitch is inside. 1 0. That's the 58th pitch delivered by Tackenden. 37, or excuse me, 36 strikes. She has no strikeouts. But again, has only allowed two runs to the number one ranked team in the state and the number one seed in the pitch. Up high, but he called it a strike. Man, oh man, one and one to count. <laughs> I, I do not understand. One and one. 
very close stance of the play by Van Ryan on the pitch. Swings at that one. That's hit very well. Going back, 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 left fielder. Makes the catch right in front of the fence. Wow. Right in front of the fence. Abby gave it a ride, but a nice catch out there in left field by Takanen. That'll bring up Abby Lake. When I first went up in the air, I thought I might be out of here, but she caught it right at the fence. And again, there's a lot of fans out behind the outfield fence. We even got a pop-up tent out there. Lake steps in, right-handed hitter. She popped out to the catcher, grounded out to third, and the pitch. First pitch is a, well, he called it a ball. It looked like it was a strike. It's one and all. That was lower than the pitch he called a strike in the last at bat. One and oh. There is a gaping hole in right center field. It has been all day. Lake watched the pitch go right down the pipe, and it's one and one. Faribault had three hits last inning. They gave somebody an error. I never saw an error. I didn't know where they came up with an error. And the pitch is fouled off. One and two, the count. I mean, our Brewster's hit was a solid single up the middle. It may have ticked uh, somebody's glove behind second base, but I would not give an error on that. That ball's hit to right field, and it's a foul ball. One and two. We're talking about a no-hitter. Well, if Arm Brewster can retire three batters next inning, she'll have a no-hitter, too. Winona won the game. The Winona pitcher threw a no-hitter. Pitch is inside. It's two and two. So if this continues, Faribault will be facing Winona in the semifinals at five this evening. An all-Big Nine semifinal. Winona the defending state champs. And, of course, both pitchers, if Armbruster gets three outs in a row top of this inning and doesn't allow a hit, would uh, both pitchers would come off no-hitters. And the pitch. That ball's hit well down the third baseline. Two and two. I kind of like going to first baseline myself. So two and two to Abby Lake. As Lake takes a couple of practice hats, steps back in that batter's box. The right-hander gets ready to deliver. And the pitch change up and she hammers it to left field it's a base hit at least right goes around first the time she was not she was not interfered with or she has a single solid single stroke to left field that'll bring up ellie knutson knutson had a single and a bunt in the fourth inning that advanced cassie swanson to third base and runners at first and third but then knutson tried to steal second and was the third out of the fourth inning with a runner at third base Yep, they've run into a couple outs in this game. Swings and hits it straight back 0-1-1. Oh, and one the count. There is one out. Lake at first base. Right-hander tacking in. Gets her fingers wet. Rubs it on her leg and the pitch. It hit her, I thought. Runner goes down to second base on the wild pitch that went to the fence. I thought it hit Knutson in the feet, but I guess not. One and one is the count on the wild pitch. Lake gets into scoring position. Lake gets into scoring position. One and one is the count. Uh, sir, can you get out of the way, please? One and one to Lake as she steps in. Right-hander continues to fidget with the ball in her glove. And the pitch. It's a strike. <laughs> One and two, the count. 
the delayed call there. One out, runner at second. Trouble really would love to get that run in, obviously. Up 2 nothing, and a little more insurance going into the last inning, hopefully the last inning of the game. Pitch is up high. It is 2-2. Two and two. Well, well, you might want to think about focusing on a zone. If the ball's in that zone, taking a whack at it. She's got some power, too. As the right-hander kicks and delivers. That ball's fouled off. Two and two. Two and two, the count. Turbo has eight hits in this game, and they only have two runs. Of course, they've run into a couple outs. One at third with a ball in front of the runner. That was a big-time no-no. And they threw out Knutson trying to steal second for the third out with a runner at third in the fifth inning when they had scored one run in the inning. Or excuse me, that was in the fourth inning with a runner at, at third in that inning, Cassie Swanson, as she falls off the next pitch. So there was a runner at third. There were two outs when Ellie got the single to get Swanson two-thirds, so there were runners at the corners with two outs when they elected to try and steal her. Of course, she's their top base stealer, but she got thrown out rather easily. It was an excellent throw, and the pitch up high, and they're in danger of putting a speedy runner at first base. Only one out here in the sixth inning. Winona's already won their game by a score of 2-1. to one. A 2-1 to one and a 4 versus 5 seed, so they didn't exactly breeze either in the pitch. Change up, Walker. So Knutson drops her bat, goes down to first base on the walk. That is the second walk. With one out, runners at first and second, and that'll bring up Cameron Selmanson. Conclusion of our game, we'll have our Arshamble Brothers Disposal Business of the Year, Chamber Business of the Year 2018. Pickup of the game. So far, Salmonson has that. Nice catch in left field. Pitch up high. 1 0. That almost looked like a church league pitch there. The umpire is going to, well, I guess the coach called time for Bemidji. Brad Takanen is their head coach. Brad's going to come out and talk to his infield. And, well, maybe, I can't believe she'd be tired. She hasn't thrown a lot of pitches. 57 coming into the inning. It is a muggy day today, but Armbruster, meanwhile, will see the two, three, and four hitters in the top of the seventh. Terrible hopes to give her a bigger than a 2 nothing lead. They have runners at first and second with one out. Meanwhile, the base runners got to go over and talk to Chris Silber. Now they go to their respective bases. Lake at second, Knutson at first. As Salmonson steps in, 0 for 2 on the day. She swung on a 3 and 0 count in her last at bat and grounded out the short. At least I had 3 and 0 and might have had the count wrong. And the pitch is up high, 1 and 2 and 0. I forgot that she had a ball to her when he took called time. So it's 2-0 to Salmonson. She's the eight hitter in the order. We're in the sixth inning, 2-0 Faribault. And the pitch. Oh, man, that was an awfully good pitch to take. But it's called a ball. My gosh, it's 3-0. That ball is right over the plate. I don't know why he called that a ball. So 3-0 is the count. Looked like it was right in her wheelhouse. And the pitch. That looks high, and it is high. So back-to-back -back walks. All of a sudden, the wheels are coming off the track a little bit here for Ms. Tackinen. Bags are juiced with a one-out. Lauren O'Neill. Now she gets any kind of a hit. It should score two runs. Knutson's the fastest player on the team at second base. It was a hit to the outfield. I should say not hitting hit. Golden opportunity to break this game open in the pitch up high. She's missing high all the time. It's one and all. That was a four pitch walk to Selmanson. Prior to that, she walked Knutson 
the count was full there. She had a two and two count on the single. That ball's hit foul. One and one. Well, you just had back to back walks. O'Neill swings and falls off the pitch, and it's one and one. This is where you kind of want to be patient. One and one, the count. We're in the sixth inning. Field number one, Caswell Park, North Mankato. The next offering is a ball, and it's two and one. That goes on the outside corner, maybe. So two and one, O'Neill's a left-handed hitter. They've got the uh, slap and bump defense up. So that cuts down their coverage. She hits anything toward a hole, it's gonna be a hit on the infield. And the pitch is infield's drawn in here with that runner at third base. It's three and one. She's got nowhere to put her. A walk means an RBI for O'Neill. And a 3 nothing Falcon lead here in the sixth inning. So the righty fidgets with the ball in the glove and delivers. It's a slow roller. That's going to be trouble. First base and throws to home, and she's safe. She beat the throw home late. It wasn't even close. O'Neill is at first. It's a fielder's choice. As the first baseman elected to throw home instead of tagging her running by her, she could have done that. There's still one out here in the sixth inning. And Allie Shack, who has three hits on the day, two singles and a homer is coming to the plate. I think we can already circle Allie's name as one of our Faribault State Farm Insurance Agents Faribault players of this game, don't you? <laughs> I've just circled it. Uh, regardless of what happens here, she'll be the one of the players of this game at least. Lake got this inning started with a single to left. We got a pitching change here for the Bemidji Lumberjacks as Takanen goes out. Coming in the pitch is going to be Hanson. Maddie Hansen will come in to pitch in the sixth. And I don't know where Takanen's going to go here. We'll see. I'll try and get that track down for you. So a new pitcher, a pitching change for Bemidji here in the bottom of the sixth. The Falcons lead it three to nothing. They have runners on every bag still. The bags are still juiced. We'll be back in 30 seconds. For delicious food at very good prices, stop by the Broaster in Faribault. Their specialty is the genuine Broaster chicken, but the fish is excellent. The burgers are terrific. You get to choose a baked potato with your meal. Service is awesome. The meals are not pre-cooked. You get your chicken, fish, shrimp, or burgers fresh, juicy. Next time you're hungry, go to the Broaster, 221 Lindale Avenue South in Faribault. Your stomach will thank you. Oh, yeah. So Allie Shack will step in against the new right-handed pitcher, Hanson. I still haven't figured out where the pitcher went to. I don't know why they didn't announce it. But they didn't. And the pitch. Jammed her. It's a strike. 0-1. Oh, Last time they jammed her, she got a single. She had a single in the first inning. She had a homer on a one-on-one -on -one count in the third inning. She has scored two of the team's three runs. Now you know why she's my Faribault State Farm Insurance agent, Faribault player of the game, or one of them. Next pitch misses. She's got nowhere to put her. Bags are juiced again. Faribault can break this baby wide open with any kind of a hit here. There's one out. Anything to the outfield, and a couple of runs will score. And the pitch. High fly ball to left field. Left fielder will catch it. They're going to tag the runner from third. Easily scoring is Knutson. So a sack fly RBI by Shaq. Picks up her second ribby of the game. 
Knutson scores on the sack fly. Runners at first and second with two outs, and that'll bring up Michaela Armbruster. It's now 4 0, although the scoreboard hasn't changed. It's 4 0, Farrell Ball. Now they're appeal. They appealed whether she tagged or not, and I saw the coach wait to tell her to go. So the umpire, they appealed, and of course you can do that, obviously, it's part of the game. They threw over to third to appeal, whether she tagged. Now the umpire is talking to a lot of different people. I don't know what he's saying or what he's doing. He's talking to his other umpires. He's advancing the runners to second and third. I guess I don't understand. Now the uh, coach Tackinen's wondering why are the why are the runners advancing to second and third? I don't understand this either. So meanwhile, the umpire is explaining to the coach why he's allowing the Falcon runners to advance to second and third on the sack fly to left field. They had stayed stationary as can be as Knutson scored. This is a new one on me. I mean, there was no real even throw to a plate, so you couldn't call, you know, maybe a blocking of the plate by the catcher or something, and I don't know. I'm just trying to think outside the box here. I have no clue. Coach Tackinen is very animated in his discussion with the umpire, but I don't think the umpire is going to change his mind. <laughs> I'm going to have to get an explanation for that after the game. I really don't understand it. Maybe one of these softball coaches from college sitting in front of me can tell me what's going on. Do other runners get to advance on a sack fly automatically? I've never seen that before. Meanwhile, Michaela Armbruster's uh, waiting to bat. The conversation's over with the head coach from Bemidji. It's 4 nothing Falcons. She can help her cause. That was the second out if she can get a hit here. Third baseman's drawn in. Armbruster has seen three pitches, has a single, and two ground outs. Or no, I'm sorry, they're... they're... Shaq's still at the plate. I don't understand this. Shaq's still at the plate. She just hit a sack fly RBI. Pops it up. They advance the runners to second and third. Why is she at the plate? I don't know, but she pops out to the third baseman. What is going on here? I have no clue what's going on here. Huh? An illegal pitch? <laughs> okay. There was a spitball, huh? <laughs> Called an illegal pitch. That's what one of the coaches here just said. Sir? Sir? Well, I don't know how he could call an extraction on the catcher, but, but I guess that's what he called. So Shaq gets to bat again. She just popped out twice, and she's still batting because they called catcher interference, I guess. And the pitch is up high. So three and two is the count. You can hear the uh, Bemidji <laughs> broadcaster wondering what's going on, too. <laughs> But I got the coach here saying he called the catcher interference, which I did not see. And, and the pitch is hammered foul. Well, Shaq has had two flyouts. They allowed the run to score, Knutson. They advanced the other two runners. There's another runner that's not on the base pads right now. They accounted that run two to make it five to nothing. I mean, I'm really perplexed by all this. I mean, I never knew. And the pitch. Is hammered, that might be out of here. Going back, back at it, it's gone! Another home run by Ali Shaq. 
The young lady gets three lives, right? She sacrificed flies, gets brought back to the plate. She pops out, gets brought back to the plate, both on catcher interference. Third time's a charm. It's a home run. I'll bet they never see that one again in the state tournament. <laughs> Twice. Flied out. Still stayed at the plate due to catcher interference. And then strokes a home run to clear the bases. And this baby is wide open. It's now 7 to nothing. Faribault here in the 6th. <laughs> oh, my. Well, Coach Tackett and can't be a happy guy right now. That pitch is hit foul by Arm Brewster, 0-1. Well, maybe they, she, they called her blocking the plate on the Knutson run home, but that, I mean, the throw wasn't even made to home, so that couldn't have been the call. And that's when the coach over here was nice enough to tell me that he thought the umpire called catcher interference. That many times in a row is a weird change up. Slow rollers, shortstop charging, will rifle over to first and throw it wide of the bag. It'll be an error. Armbrust will be safe on the error as the wheels have officially come off the track here for the Lumberjacks. They have been felled, it looks like. We're going to have Kelsey DeMars, sophomore, go in and run here. For Arm Brewster, you gotta conserve her energy if you can. And you may not see Arm Brewster pitch in the seventh either. You may see the backup pitcher throw, and that gives her another inning of rest. That'd be my guess. Up seven nothing. There's a sea of Hayfield Viking fans in gold shirts behind the outfield fence. I don't know how the umpire can tell the difference between the gold top and the gold shirts to call a home run. There's a fall ball by. <laughs> Excuse me, Bresnahan. 0-0 oh, on the count. Bree had an RBI single her last time up. Just hit it right back up the middle on the first pitch she saw. Of course, that was a different pitcher. This is Hanson. Five runs in in the inning, and one of the most bizarre innings you'll ever hear or see. There goes a runner down to second, and a ball is in the dirt. They throw it into the left and center field. She'll stay at second base. Well, she was off and running as the ball hit the dirt. I like that. One and one is the count to Bresnahan. Terrible's going to get greedy here. If they score three more runs, this game's over by the 10 run rule here in the sixth. And there's nothing wrong with that in a double elimination tournament to save some energy for your next game. You're in tune to KDHLAM, Terrible, Minnesota, with the state fast pitch tournament. Faribault's up 7-0 on Bemidji. Ball's popped up. This should get him out of the inning. A second baseman waited for the right fielder. She wasn't really running hard, so she decided to take it herself. That's the second out. And that'll bring up Cassie Swanson. Runner at second. Two outs here in the sixth inning. Actually, due to catcher interference, they've had like five outs in this inning. <laughs> The Swanson steps back in. And the pitch. Hammers it to short. Tried to backhand it. Pops up in the air. That's going to be a hit in my book. They're taking an excellent play for a shortstop to catch that. They give her an error. That's a tough error. These are high school kids. They're deciding whether or not they're going to call, I call it a hit or an error, I guess, because they haven't put the bulb up on the board. So Abby Van Ryan will step up here in the sixth inning. Seven nothing is our score. Runners at the corners with two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. Van Ryan started the inning with a fly out to left field. First pitch is down low, one and zero. Oh. Abby, in a rarity, has not had a hit today. Ties her right shoe. Well, hopefully she saves some for the Winona game. Looks like Faribault will be playing Winona, the defending state champs at five. All Big Nine Conference semifinal. Last year it was all 
It was uh, no, it was the year before. It was all Big Nine Conference semifinal when West beat Winona to go on and win the state title two years ago. Winona won the state title last year, and Faribault's hoping to do it this year. All Big Nine teams pitch inside, three and zero. Oh. So if she walks Van Ryan, the bags will be juiced for Lake in a marathon six inning here for the Falcons. Seven nothing Faribault leads. It was two nothing coming into the inning. That's called a strike. Three and one. Three and one the count. Van Ryan steps back in the pitch. That's hit right up the middle to the gap right center field. One run scores, and that'll be it. Another run though. Van Ryan strokes an RBI single. Picks up her 22nd RBI of the season. Swanson goes to third. DeMars scores. She was the courtesy runner for Arm Brewster. It's now eight to nothing. And again, if Faribault scores two runs here, this game would be over by the 10 run rule after six. And nobody would have to spend more energy in the seven. That would be ideal, I'm sure, for the coaches of Faribault if they could get that accomplished. So Lake steps in, right-handed hitting sophomore, single their last time up. That was earlier this inning. That kind of started the end, the beginning of the end in this inning for their starting pitcher, Takanen. First pitch is a ball, 1-0. Hansen hasn't fared too well either. This will be her fifth batter, and the pitch is a, no, it's a ball, 2-0. and oh. No, I'm sorry, it's 1-1. One and one. The first was a strike, 1-1 one and one to count. He doesn't exactly call the strikes real easily as I hit the right field. Right fielder goes to her left and makes a nice catch. Nice catch in right field, Robin Lake. That might have uh, might have ended the game here in the sixth, but it doesn't. We're going to have a top of the seventh. Faribault scores six runs on one, two, three, four hits. There were, oh, there's one error here in the sixth inning. They called an error earlier in the game. I don't know where that was, to be honest. A couple of runners were left, one in scoring position. As we go to the top of the seventh, it'll be batters two, three, and four. And Arm Brewster's back out. That's interesting in the top of the seventh with a team up by an eight to nothing score. We'll be back in one minute. These days, there are so many promotional products available to help get the word out about your business. Let Star Trophy and Apparel assist you. Star Trophy and Apparel. The sky really is the limit here. Golf balls, pens, mouse pads, mugs, umbrellas. Star Trophy and Apparel can get you set up. Stop in for a terrific selection of athletic wear, too. Falcons, Bethlehem Academy, Medford, Waterville, Elysian, Morristown. Trophies and plaques, hats, shirts, jackets with your company logo on them. Star Trophy and Apparel, the place to go, located at 128 Prairie Avenue Southwest, Faribault. Considering a move in 2018? Follow our lead at the State Bank of Faribault. Hi, I'm Chris Jeans from the State Bank of Faribault Mortgage Department. We are packing up our mortgage department and moving out to our branch location on Western Avenue. When you want to buy a new home, work with the State Bank of Faribault, your local mortgage experts. We specialize in helping you find the mortgage and payment that best fits your budget. It's easier to work with the State Bank of Faribault. The State Bank of Faribault, tsbf.com, member FDIC, equal housing lender, NMLS 638054. Hey, if you want to be a hit with your employees, if you want to be a hit with your team, make sure you swing in to Star Trophy and Apparel. The first pitch here, I guess, is a strike to Takanen. Arm Brewster is out, and my guess is, and I guess I don't blame the coaches, they wanted to have a chance to have a no-hitter in the state tournament. I didn't even think of that before, but it makes perfect sense. And the pitch, oh, a beautiful change-up strike. Oh, and two. Man, did that baby float in there. Oh, and two. So if she's able to get that no-hitter, both pitchers will be going into that game coming off no-hitters. Next offering is a ball. It's one and two to Annika Takanen. 
Rebels up 8-0. We're in the top of the seventh. She scored six runs. Six runs in the sixth inning as she fouls off the next pitch. She's trying to... She tried to bunt initially to get on. They haven't tried that a lot today. Obviously have not been successful. Arn Brewster has a no-hitter, just one base runner, a walk in the first inning. That was with one out. And the pitch. Framing it is Van Ryan, and it's called a ball, two and two. Two and two, the count to Annika Takanen, leading off the seventh inning. As Arn Brewster's pitch is a half swing, strikeout number 15. 15 strikeouts for Arm Brewster. Make sure you swing by Bashers. J&J Bowling Center, take advantage of that great bowling special they got going on, 40 bucks. You can bowl three games a day, Tuesday through Thursday. That's, by my math, that's 12 games, right? Or no, it's nine games. It's Tuesday through Thursday, right? So swings it off for some reason. I thought it was four days, but it's... As she falls off the pitch, 0-1 to Morgan. Morgan's 0 for 2, a pop out and a strikeout. Armbruster struck out every batter in the order today. Swing and a miss, 0-2. <laughs> it's just got to be a sagging feeling when everybody's going up there and fanning. <laughs> Again, we'll have the 5 o'clock game. If we're on time, we'll get on the way about 4.40. She swings and misses for strikeout number 16. And Gracie Fishy will step up. Or Fisher, excuse me. Fisher, the last hope for Bemidji. She has four homers on the season. Arm Brewster is a pitch away from a no-hitter in the state tournament. Takes a deep sigh, lets it fly, and it's a ball, one and all. Oh, strike zone's a little smaller here. 1-0 and the count to Gracie Fisher. Righty's pitch. Chander pops it into the screen, and it's 1-1. One and one. Arm Brewster had 78 pitches coming into this inning. Remember, we told you she averaged about 94 pitches a game. And the reason it's higher is she is a strikeout pitcher. Averages over 12 strikeouts a game. Righty's pitch. Changeup. And again, he has not called a change up a strike very often today. It's two and one. Sure looks like a good pitch. Two and one, the count. Arm Brewster's next pitch. Swings and falls it off. Had a good hack at that one. It's two and two. There haven't been many really good swings. She has definitely kept them off balance today. Her and her battery mate, Abby Van Ryan. Two and two, top of the seventh inning, eight nothing Falcons. And the pitch. Change up, struck her out. And Ryan dropped it, throws it to first. Strikeout number 17. A mowing down top of the seventh. Terrible Falcons are heading to the semifinals to take on the Winona Winox. Yep, the defending state champions and a fellow Big Nine Conference team at five this evening. We have a lot of work to do here. We need to have our, our Shamble Brothers disposal pick up of the game. There weren't a lot of defensive plays in this game, frankly, with 17 strikeouts. We also need to choose our Fairable State Farm Insurance Agents Fairable Players of the game in this contest, right? We certainly want to get all that business done. So we'll do that right after this one-minute timeout. Buying or selling a house doesn't have to be a stressful process. Weikert Realtors Heartland is there to help you every step of the way. Their dedicated and professional agents provide their knowledge and expertise for smart decisions in today's real estate market. They can help you find your current house value or find you that dream house you've been waiting to find. Buying or selling, Team Yellow is for you. Call 507-334-2173. Weikert Realtors Fairbo. 
With First United Bank in Faribault, you may be able to buy a home with only 3% down. The good news does not end there. Qualified buyers will also receive a $5,000 grant to use for funds towards down payment and or closing costs. This program is not just for first-time home buyers. Contact the mortgage team at First United Bank today, Debbie Nelson or Chris O'Neill, for complete details. Get closer to your new home purchase with 3% down. First United Bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender NMLS number 486008. Well, we're in the process of giving the line totals here. Gerbo scores eight. Eight runs. Eleven hits by Faribault. Remember they had, uh, well, they had seven hits going into the sixth inning when they kind of blew things open with four hits. They had seven hits going into that inning. They had four, eleven hits total in my scorebook. Now, they gave an error somewhere along the line that I... Frankly, didn't see. Faribault did not have any errors. They left seven runners on base, four of them in scoring position. For Bemidji, they had no runs. They had no hits. Arm Brewster has a no-hitter. I had them with one error. Their official scorer had them with two. One runner left in scoring position was the final line total for Bemidji. Our state Farm players of the game, courtesy of your Faribault State Farm insurance agents, Tony Langwood and Jason Crone. Well, no question, Ali Shack. She has two homers in the game, scores three of the team's runs, and has two singles. She was four for four at the plate in my scorebook. I don't think they ruled an error on her hit to left field. Uh, I was blocked out by the dugout if the left fielder might have had a chance at the ball, but it was a screaming hit. Even if she doesn't catch it, it's a line drive and she had to run to her right to catch it. Even if that happened, I would not have ruled an error myself. In any event, that's what I had in my scorebook. Michaela Armbruster had a single in this game. Bree Bresnan had an RBI single in the fifth inning, a single by Cassie. Actually, Swanson had two hits, a double and a single, a double lead off the fourth, and a single there in the big sixth inning. Ellie Knutson had a single as well in this game. Obviously, Michaela Armbruster will be one of our other Faribault State Farm Insurance Agents Faribault players of the game. You throw a no-hitter in the state tournament and strike out 17 batters, well, you deserve to be a player of the game. She threw. I'm in the process of adding this up. 92 total pitches. So she was two pitches under average, right? 94 is her average, 92. No hitter in the state tournament for the Winona pitcher. No hitter in the state tournament for Arm Brewster. So two pitchers will be facing each other in the semis at five in Class 3A. That game could be for the state championship. You know what I'm saying? It could be for the state title. Two pitchers coming off. No hitters will be going at it at five this evening. So it uh, could probably be a very quick game, a very low-scoring game, one would think. Eight to nothing, our final score here. So those were our Faribault State Farm Insurance Agents, Faribault uh, players of the game in this one. Our pickup of the game, well, there really was not a lot of pickups to be made. Salmonson made a nice running catch in left field. I think that'll still stand as our our Shamble Brothers disposal pickup of the game. It wasn't a diving catch or anything, but it was a nice running catch. And really, there weren't a lot of other fielding plays. Lake made a nice catch in the sixth inning to end that inning. And it was hit to right field, but she just kind of went back a few steps and made the catch. And then Bresnahan caught a pop-up behind second base in the fourth inning and caught a liner hit to her by Fisher in the fourth inning as well. So she had a couple of chances there. So, again, Cameron Salmonson will get our our Shamble Brothers disposal of Faribault pickup of the game. If you need refuse picked up or recycles picked up, if you need some roll-offs or dumpsters, make sure you contact our Shamble Brothers disposal. Service is their middle name at our Shamble Brothers. Name the 2018 Faribault Area Chamber of Commerce Business of the Year. And they're proud of that fact at our Shamble Brothers disposal. And they should be. We'll wrap things up from North Mankato in this first game in one minute.
The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers was founded by 10 men over a century ago. Since then, women have made IBEW Local 110 a rewarding place to work, learn, and thrive. This rewarding career offers women and men equal pay, benefits, and the best training in the electrical industry. Visit the work tab on IBEWpros.org to find out more about an electrical career. Get your next electrical project done on time and on budget. That's the IBEW Local Union 110's power of professionalism. Considering a move in 2018? Follow our lead at the State Bank of Faribault. Hi, I'm Chris Jeans from the State Bank of Faribault Mortgage Department. We are packing up our mortgage department and moving out to our branch location on Western Avenue. When you want to buy a new home, work with the State Bank of Faribault, your local mortgage experts. We specialize in helping you find the mortgage and payment that best fits your budget. It's easier to work with the State Bank of Faribault. The State Bank of Fairbow, TSBF.com, member FDIC, equal housing lender, NMLS 638054. We are looking at the program to tell me what field we are on for the semifinal game. We'll be on field number three if you're coming over later today. Field number three is what the program says. Faribault and Winona will square off on field number three. We're on number one now. So field number three will be the semifinal game scheduled for a 5 o'clock first pitch this evening. And if we're on time, uh, we'll get underway about 4.40 this afternoon. That's the plan anyway, 4.40 this afternoon. We'll get underway. Again, if we're on time, we'll obviously let folks know back at the studios. And, and you know, they'll let you folks know what the status is. As the Faribault Falcons and the Winona Winhawks, both out of the Big Nine Conference, are playing in the semifinals. Winona was the number four seed in this tournament. I did bring the state rankings here, the last ones I saw anyway. Faribault was number one. And Winona was number... I'm on my clipboard here. Winona was the number four ranked team in the state. They are the defending state champions. So they've been there before, if you know what I mean. Faribault in their first ever state tournament will obviously be in their first ever state semifinal game, but they get to take on an opponent that they know very well. Obviously, Winona knows Faribault well, too. Man, oh, man, that could be a game for the ages, and we'll have it for you right here on KDHL. Hey, folks, if you swing into Star Trophy and Apparel, as I was mentioning earlier, you'll be a hit with your company or your team because they do a fantastic job at Star Trophy and Apparel and the prices are so so reasonable if you need mouse pads, pens keychains, hats apparel you know shirts, jackets that sort of thing they can put your company logo on them stop in and give it a try at Star Trophy and Apparel I guarantee you you'll be very happy that you did Star Trophy and Apparel I want to thank the broster for bringing you our pregame show. He'll bring us the pregame show again. The Broster will. Make sure you swing on by there if you're looking for some good food. I love the fish. I know they're famous for their chicken, but I do love their fish there at the Broster. And of course, if you swing by Bashers, they're famous for their ribs. They are famous for their ribs at Bashers, the J&J Bowling Center. Final score here, the Faribault Falcons go to 21-2 and on the season. Bemidji goes to 16-9 and on the year. Falcons will be taking on the Winona Winhawks, who are 18 and 5 on the year. Obviously, Faribault beat Winona earlier this year. We had that game on the radio. It was in Faribault. Didn't have to go all the way to Winona like we did last year. It was a very exciting game. I know that. Unfortunately, I don't have the scorebook with me <laughs> that that game is in. I've gone through a, a couple of different scorebooks. This is probably my third scorebook this season, and uh, I didn't think to bring it with me. Silly, silly me. So I'll have to refresh my memory by asking the coaches about that first game. As the final here is eight to nothing, Falcons. Again, Michaela Armbruster throws a no hitter today. Ali Shack hits two home runs, and in my scorebook, a couple of singles on the day as well. Our broadcast has been a service of Steel Wasika Co-op Electric by Reliance Bank Faribault, Parker Cole Funeral Home in Faribault, Deb Salmonson Remax Realty of Faribault. Of course. On the Deb Salmonson Remax Realty at Faribault scoreboard, in the final eight to nothing. Faribault cranks out 11 hits. Took them a while to get going, but boy, did they get going. Also, our Shamble Brothers disposal of Faribault brought you our pickup of the game. 
Cameron Selmanson wins that. A nice running catch in left field. Harley's Auto Salvage of Faribault. Judd Osterman and Denro of Faribault. Garlic's Water Conditioning. First United Bank. Bashers, the J&J Bowling Center. Pleasant Manor, Pleasant View Estates. Faribault Interiors. Make sure, again, you swing by there and... It's like a candy store for decorators, I'm telling you. They can do every kind of thing in your home. They do the window treatments, the cabinets. They do the countertops. They can do the flooring, all of it, from Faribault Interiors, and they're such fun people to work with. Both funeral home of Faribault, Tony Langer and Jason Crone, your Faribault State Farm insurance agents, Consolidated Communications, IBEW Local Union 110, Hometown Credit Union. The Broaster in Faribault brings you our pregame and will again later today. Star Trophy and Apparel of Faribault. You'll always be a hit with your company or with your uh, team if you get your apparel there at Star Trophy. Obviously, they do trophies and engraving and awards. I had a friend once that quit smoking. Honestly, he quit smoking, and I got him a plaque for quitting smoking. And he says, Gordy, that was one of the nicest Pri uh, prizes, one of the nicest trophies I've ever had. I hung it in my bedroom. It reminds me every day that I quit smoking, however many years ago it's been now. And he was very appreciative of that fact. So just something, just a thought, just an idea. And it worked for me, and maybe it'll work for you too. Get on into Star Trophy. Maybe a friend of yours has quit smoking or maybe quit drinking or something like that. You can get them a plaque, and they're, they're very <laughs> proud. And, and believe me, I'm not making this story up. It's a true story. He loved it. So, you can mark lots of other rewards with a trophy from Star Trophy and Apparel in Faribault. Weikert Realty, Jake Pillar of Faribault, and the State Bank of Faribault, all bringing you our broadcast here today from Caswell Park, North Van Cato. Falcons will play the defending state champs of Winona in the semifinals. You know, 5 o'clock first pitch is scheduled. We'll get in the way about 440 if everything's on time. Till then, this is Gordy Cosfeld. Hope you enjoyed our broadcast. Well, hopefully, if you're not here, you'll be on the airwaves with us later today. See you then.